Hello, I am Paul J. Salvino, and I am humbled to serve as the superintendent of the Maslin City Schools. On Tuesday, November 3rd, the Maslin City Schools will have a levy renewal on the ballot. This no new taxes renewal will be issue 32. Issue 32 was originally passed in 1996, and the dedicated residents of the Maslin City Schools have been extremely supportive every five years during elections since then. Issue 32 is a five-year renewal that equals no new taxes. Issue 32 will generate $2 million per year for our schools. With the recent loss of school funding due to the COVID-19 pandemic, this renewal will be critical for our organization. On behalf of the Maslin City Schools, I ask you to exercise your civic duty on Election Day, Tuesday, November 3rd, 2020. Thank you, and go Tigers! Myth. I can party with people as long as they don't have symptoms. That myth is false. As we've seen, up to 40% of people who have COVID-19 are asymptomatic and can pass it on to others. So I'd recommend avoiding any social parties, especially indoor ones. If you want to try to socialize but reduce your risk, I'd recommend meeting outside in small groups, continuing to wear a mask, and socially distancing from others if you can. Then together, we can keep COVID-19 out of school. For ways to keep your community safe, go to backtoschooltogether.com. Today I'm going to talk to you about physics. Come on in, girls. Let's go. This is the first rocket to get humans to Mars. Really tall. I'm a rocket structural engineer designing and building parts of the rocket. You are the generation that will be stepping foot on Mars. Do I have a group of astronauts on my hands? Yes. You can become a rocket scientist or whatever else you want to be. Well, good afternoon, everybody. We are here on the field at Paul Brown Tiger Stadium, our pregame show. I'm Dave Sheets. I'll be doing the play-by-play -play today. Joining me, Jamie Palma, longtime Masson football coach, current Masson Schools administrator. Jamie, you coached in this game for 13 years. What was that experience like, and what are these teams feeling as they're out on the field getting ready? Yeah, you know, thanks, Dave. You know, to be honest with you, I'm not from Maslin, so when I came in as a coach, a new coach, you know, I, I, had, I, I knew about some of the things you hear about, but you really don't understand it until you're a part of it. And I'll never forget coaching in that first game. Uh, what I would say is, you know, the, if you look at the history of this game and you look at the games, um, there, there's going to be constant transitions that are going to go in favor of for Maslin, for McKinley, and what these players need to be able to do is control that. There's going to be good things that happen for them. There's going to be bad things that happen for each team, and it's whoever sort of reacts the best to that that sort of seems to come out on top. I mean, this game has been such a tight football game over the last five, six years. Um, I know, you know, Maslin has won four of the last five, but you look at those five contests, they all came down to the fourth quarter. So it's just a matter of who can or cannot handle, you know, the ups and downs of this, the emotions of this game, and, and, and then who makes the most plays at the end to finish the ball game. Jamie, both these teams come in with four and one records. McKinley losing to Perry. Maslin losing, of course, their opener to Lakewood St. Ed's. Uh, what kind of feeling do you have for both these teams? Kind of give a scouting report on both these clubs. Yeah, you know, I, th I think Maslin's had, had very high expectations as well as McKinley. They both had high expectations coming into the year. Um, I'm sure they'd both like to be 5-0. and they, You know, Maslin had a very tough loss against the, what we now see a very tough Lakewood St. Ed's team uh, that's had some significant wins even after that win against Maslin. So I think I think Maslin's had the tougher schedule for sure. Um, the fact that they're 4-1, and one, you know, shows that they're starting to build some of that confidence. Uh, you know, and it's, it's just... How are they handling some of the injuries that they're going to be dealing with? But as you saw, McKinley, the same thing. McKinley's had some key significant guys out over the last uh, few weeks. I think those kids will be dressed up today and ready to go, and I think we'll see a, a full onslaught. But I think the expectations were high for both teams, so I'm not surprised they're both 4-1. and one. But, uh, you know, again, I just think it's going to be a matter of you got two really great teams, a lot of Division One athletes on the field. It's going to be whoever can make the most plays. All right, we'll have more of our pregame show after this timeout. At MCTV, we listen to your needs. That's why our internet options deliver the speed and reliability you don't just want, but you need. 
Upgrade your internet service to give your in-home Wi-Fi an extra boost. More data running through your home means you can power more devices, spend less time buffering, and more time connected to what matters most. Upgrade today. Give us a call or contact us online. MCTV. We go the extra smile. And we're back here on the field of Paul Brown Tiger Stadium. Dave Shates along with the head coach of the Maslin Tigers, Nate Moore. Nate, this is your sixth Maslin McKinley game. What has this whole experience been like this year compared to years past? You know, we really don't make those types of comparisons. We just take the week as it is, and, and we're ready for a ball game today. How about your team? Uh, what's the mindset of the Tigers getting ready to face this very athletic, very quick McKinley team? We're ready to go. All right. And finally, how about a scouting report? Tell us a little bit about McKinley's offense and defense and special teams. They're, they're a very good, well-coached football team with, with an excellent quarterback and middle linebacker. All right. Coach, thanks for your time. Best of luck. You bet. Thank you. We'll be back in a moment here on the field. We've told you about the Mirrors Must See Guarantee, but don't take our word for it. Well, before we came in to test drive the vehicle, my husband and I had done some research on the website and we really enjoyed how easy Mirrors Nissan's website was to use. We weren't really sure at that time because we didn't need to buy a car. Very low key, low pressure, let us you know, take the weekend to think about it. So it was really easy peasy for us. See us at 4825 West Tuscarora Street in Canton or online at MearsNissan.com. We're back here on the field. I want to thank head coach of the Mass and Tigers, Nate Moore, for joining us. Jamie Palmer rejoins me here on the field now. Jamie, sun has come out. It's a beautiful day. We're not going to have 17,000. We're not going to have 10,000. We're not going to have 5,000. We're going to have roughly 1,700 fans here today. Does that make any difference to the players on the field? Yeah, you know, I, I, I definitely think the pregame atmosphere is not there for them, and, and they miss that. But once those whistles blow and, the, and those guys get out on that 100-yard football field, they understand the magnitude of this game. And, and I definitely think that, that uh, you know, both teams, both sets of players understand what Maslin McKinley's all about. They've grown up with it. They've grown up hearing about it. I'm sure past players have been in to talk to the teams. Coaches have, have coached them on the history of what this means. And, and I think, again, once you get out on that field and you're playing, you're playing football, that's what it's all about. It's all about the game. So, as our fireworks go out, we have a pretty good atmosphere, and it's oh, yeah. such a beautiful day. It'd be great if we had 17,000, and we know that the parking lots would be full. But uh, you know, this is what we got, but we're just glad we're here. All right, if you had to identify one key factor for each team today, what would it be? Let's start with McKinley. I'll start with McKinley. I mean, it's, it starts their quarterback, Elijah Wesley. Um, you know, he's a run-pass threat. He can he can get it done all over the field, and I, and I think you know, for McKinley to be successful. He's going to have to come out and have a big day, uh, both with his feet and, and through the air. Uh, Maslin's defense has dominated the first five games, so I think it's a matter of, of him being able to get some things off, getting comfortable, and I think that's really what's going to be the key to their success. For Maslin, you know, we know their defense has played great all year, but I'd say the key for them is, you know, being able to score in the red zone. You know, we've done a great job of moving the football, uh, you know, from 30 to 30, and it seems when we get down into the 25, you know, just for some reason, we're not finding a good flow or a good mix of, of what we can do to be successful. So I think it's a matter of executing uh, once they get down there in the red zone and, and turning field goals into, into touchdowns today. All right, it's time for you and I to head up to the box. We'll rejoin you from the press box as we continue with this year's Massive McKinley game on WHS TV. And we are back. We are live in the press box. Dave Sheets and Jamie Palma, welcome. We are about 15 minutes away from today's opening kick. It's the 131st meeting between the Tigers and the Bulldogs. And Jamie, we know both these communities surround these football teams. Both communities are, are heavily involved with the support of these teams. And what a series this has been, a 131st meeting. I get every time I, you know, I'm, I'm here for this game, even though, you know, we don't see 17,000 fans at Paul Brown Tiger Stadium, I still get butterflies. And it, it's just uh, that you can't describe the feeling um, as a coach. I've been able to coach in the game now as a just as a, as a school employee, administrator. And we know how important it is to our community, how important it is to our parents, our fans and our kids, especially. So um, I'm just excited that we're again. We didn't know if we'd get here, Dave. Mm -hmm. 
and the fact that we're here um, and the history of this game is able to continue and that we're not going to see, uh, you know, a break in that history. You know, like you said, 131 times. You know, this thing started in 1894 and it sort of, you know, developed from, you know, club ball to pro professional ball mm -hmm. and, and then uh, transitioned in, in 1912 was the first start of this high school rivalry and we have the victory bell and whatnot and just such a great uh, history between both communities and it's so important to both communities as well. We're having the presenting of the colors at this time. So we'll pause. As we watch the presentation of the colors, Jamie, let's talk a little bit uh, about this series uh, as you have categorized here by the numbers. Yeah, um, you know, this uh, it's been a it's been sort of a a back and forth as I looked at the history of this series. Uh, 1894, as I mentioned, is the first time they played, and it's interesting. One of the little facts I found that was interesting: 200 fans attended uh, for 15 cents a ticket. So that's wow. pretty neat. Uh, <laughs> A uh, neat little history there. And um, Madison's first win didn't come until 1908. So Canton sort of owned this series for the, the beginning of it. And I, it, it's been sort of a tale of the decades. But um, they played 130 times, as we know. Madison's won 72. Uh, McKinley, 53. There's been five ties. They've been able to see each other in the postseason. Unfortunately, that's not the case anymore. Mm -hmm. But six times they've seen each other in the postseason. Masson winning five of those contests and McKinley winning one. I, I got a chance to coach in three or four of those. And, wow, how exciting those are as well when you get a second shot because uh, a couple of those we had lost in week 10 and were able to come back in you know, week 12 or 13, whatever it was. Right. And just it was an awesome feeling. And I know, um, you know, if you look back at the 100th game, it was sort of the other way around. Uh, Masson was able to get that game in week 10. And a few weeks later, uh, McKinley was able to win that game. Um, you know, they've combined for 36 large school state titles and 11 national titles. And I know the big, you know, the big controversy is, you know, no, Ohio's last uh, state, or excuse me, Maslin's last state championship was 1970 pre-playoff uh, era. Mm -hmm. But you know, that's how it was. That, 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 our, our kids that were here at that time, the, the teams that were here at that time, you know, they they could only play within the in the layout of what was presented sure. to them. And, and some great teams. Um, we're honoring our our 1970 state championship team. It's been 50 years. It's wow. their 50 year anniversary. Um, Bob Cummings, the great Bob Cummings who coached here. Uh, that <laughs> that team outscored their opponents 412 to 29. Mm. I mean, yeah. it, so to say, you know, we don't know if they were if there was a playoff era with that team of one. We don't know, but I, I'm sure I'm sure with all the great teams that Maslin had, if that was the layout at the time, um, you know that that would be the case. But they won that that McKinley game 28 nothing that year. They had some great players like, you know, Steve Studer, Denny Franklin, Steve Luke, Mike Mauger, Larry Harper, uh, Larry Cardinal, um, Willie Spencer Sr. You know, just some great players that went on to play great college football and whatnot. But, um, you know, so they, these two schools have combined for such great history. Uh, we know that Matt, uh, McKinley's had a little bit more success in the playoff era, mm -hmm. you know, with their titles. But um, over the, the past, you know, 50 years since the playoffs have really started, Masson's had their share of success, too. They just haven't been able to knock that door down and, and get that title that, um, that, that we're all waiting for uh, in the playoffs. And hopefully this is the year that that happens. Well, let's go ahead and give some comparisons for the teams in 2020 through six games. Maslin comes in averaging just over 26 points a game on offense. McKinley almost 30. They have 29 points per game. Maslin's defense giving up 9.6, and actually it's a little less than that because of a kickoff return and an interception return. Right. McKinley is averaging 16 points a game, giving that up defensively. Yards rushing per game, Maslin 144, McKinley 247. Tigers passing per game, almost 172 yards. McKinley 154. Total yards per game, McKinley is just over 400 yards. 
Maslin at 316. And we'll talk uh, about more of their leaders in just a moment for both teams. Uh, you're watching the Tiger Swing Band pregame show as we are getting ready for the 131st meeting between the Tigers and the Bulldogs. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, um, our, our Tiger Swing Band is so awesome, aren't they? I just enjoy watching them and, and listening to them. Oh, and, yeah. I, and what's interesting about them is they have uh, uh, a new performance every home game so for, for mr neal and company this year they had to truly prepare each week because we had six home games right um, right you know but just uh the communities and tradition you were mentioning you know these these towns are eight miles apart blue collar towns that love football the community the stronghold of traditions and great players and facilities that we see and the crowds um you know I, I again i i just remember my first time being here and being like i cannot believe this is high school football mm -hmm. it's it's really uh <laughs> surreal you, you know your first experience and seeing the band and seeing the just all the things that go on uh, along with it um family generations and the lineage of names you yep. know the Mastin, the studers and spencers and morgans and shegogs and now the ballards and, and uh crables of the world that are starting to come up guys that i coached back in the day that have kids coming up and you know McKinley and the Grimsleys and you know and so many of those great names just the lineage and um, it's just awesome it really is Dave uh, we're just and I just I'm thankful and appreciative to be here uh, my level of appreciation from from the outside in you know I'm, I'm originally from the Youngstown area mm -hmm. so I'd always heard of it but I never experienced it until I started to coach in this game and there's great football in Youngstown, but I can tell you this right now, I never saw anything like this uh, until I came here uh, for that first game in uh, 1998. was the first one I actually attended. first one I helped coach in was 99. And uh, there's nothing remotely close. You know, Mooney and Ursuline, you hear about them. That, you know, there's that's maybe the big rivalry, and that's lost a little bit of its luster. Uh, but just you're in shock and just uh, so appreciative that we're here. It's a privilege to be here. As a fan, it's a privilege. As a player, it's a privilege. As a coach, it's a privilege um, to be a part of this game. Um, we and we we appreciate everybody watching today yeah. as well. We're we're sad that you can't be right. here. We're happy for those who are here, but we're excited that we can bring uh, this ball game into your living room or into your family room, wherever that might right. be. Right, and we're we're just we're happy we were able to par partner with Boxcast all year as well as MCTV now. And we know we have uh, Maslin and McKinley fans and neutral fans that hopefully are listening to our broadcast. And we're excited about all of them. Um, you know, just thinking back, some of my memories, some of, I, I wrote down my three fondest memories oh, now. Okay. Clearly, for me, and I, I apologize to the McKinley fans ahead of time, I coached in this game from 2000 to 2012. The number one memory for me was in 2005, because in 2005, we went over there, we were both 9-0. 24,000 people at Fawcett Stadium. And uh, we got our butts kicked. Mm -hmm. And it was the best thing that could happen to that team. Some great players like Brian Gamble, Antonio James, you know, uh, Dirk Dickerhoof, I could keep naming them down the, down the line, Bobby Hooth. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, that's what that team needed. And three weeks later, we were able to, you know, beat McKinley over in Akron. And that's the number one memory. Number two is uh, in reference to our defense coordinator, Craig McConnell. You know, Craig McConnell uh, made an interception in 2001 that ended that game mm -hmm. over at Fawcett. And I, I can never, I'll never forget that. And then the 2009 game in the playoffs and Tyler Miller's great interception. So just some great memories that I have, um, you know, and I've had some tough memories too. I mean, uh, losing some tough ones to, to McKinley, but uh, it's just such an awesome, awesome tradition. Well, I have lived my whole life in Maslin other than a couple of years uh, away at school. Uh, never left the state, but I'll tell you what, uh, I've been involved with this game for, as a broadcaster for over 40 years myself, so uh, it's it's in your blood. When you're born in Maslin, this game is in your blood, and right now, uh, the senior members of the Tiger Swing Band are being recognized on the field, uh, parents, family members with them on the field, and uh, congratulations to each and one of these outstanding seniors. I know that Maslin Band Director Jason Neal and his staff are... Uh, rely heavily on the leadership when you have a large organization like the tiger swing band they rely on their seniors for leadership and and role models and i know he's very proud of the senior group and the the job that mr neal mrs couch and that whole staff had to do to make this thing happen i mean it was it was a collective effort it really was um, we know that our fans our st students everyone's responded um, you know, it's, it's not perfect. We know that. Mm -hmm. It can't be. <laughs> you know, we've never lived through a pandemic, but 
you know, we, uh, we're very thankful for our band, cheerleaders, majorettes, all of our seniors. While we have a minute, let's take a look at some more statistics for you. First of all, for the McKinley Bulldogs, we're going to start with their quarterback, Elijah Wesley. He is a senior. He is a University of Toledo recruit on the season. Wesley has completed 43 out of 87 for 744 yards. He's thrown for seven touchdowns, and he's thrown five interceptions. He is also the leading rusher on this football team. He has rushed for over 500 yards and five more touchdowns on the ground. So he is the key guy. He's the guy the Tigers have to focus on. And that's, you know, I mentioned that in, in the pregame. Mm -hmm. We, you know, he is the heart and soul of that offense. He makes it go. He's a big play waiting to happen with his feet or his arm. I mean, the, the kid can throw the ball 60 yards in the air. You know, probably more than that. Um, he's got three really good receivers. Uh, one of them, uh, Xavier Black, who's also going to uh, Toledo. And, you know, so like I mentioned, we've got Division One talent all over the place. Um, and, you know, I think McKinley has five or six kids that will be playing on Saturdays in Division One. Same thing with Maslin. So it's, it's about containing him. I mean, he's going to make some plays, but Elijah's a special player. Let's focus on Maslin quarterback Zach Catrone, also a senior, taking over for Aiden Longwell, who obviously had an outstanding career for the Tigers. Zach threw these first five games, 50 out of 93 for 729 yards, three touchdowns, and five interceptions. Yeah, and, and I think he's been he's been efficient at times. I mean, he did he get banged up in the first um, first game. Mm -hmm. It was the, one of the last plays of San Ed's game. He came down on that throwing shoulders. He's been in a lot of pain all year. He's fought through it, and I know you know. Um, He's had some ups and downs, but he, he's shown his capability of making plays. I mean, I don't think you look at those stats and say, wow, you know, with some of the receivers we have. But I, I definitely think that um, that, that Zach is, is, has been productive, and he, we need a big game out of him. We need him to, to take care of the football and you know, make sure that, uh, you know, that he's making efficient throws and don't put the defense in a, in a bad spot. Tiger Swing Band now with the Washington High School alma mater. Jamie, let's take a minute and talk about these two teams defensively. We'll start with Maslin this time. This defense, as I talked earlier, giving up less than 10 points a game. They've picked off nine passes in five games. They've done a great job. Leading tackler, linebacker, Jaden Wise. Defensive lineman, Mark Miller, a standout. Mike, yeah, Defensive Mike. back, uh, Isaiah Clark as well. So you have a leader at, at each three levels yeah. of the defense. And, and Jaden Wise, uh, they did an article on him. You know, he hadn't played organized football for since his freshman year. He's just had some battles, some injuries and things. Uh, so he's been quite surprised. And I'll tell you what, I've watched a lot of film. That, that outside linebacker position is such a key component. He's, he's done a great job. Um, you know, Mike, Mike Miller has, has been dominant up front. Isaiah Clark has been the leader back there in the secondary. And we only we only had one returning starter this year on right. defense. That's Caden Willard, and, who's, and we've also seen him making plays all over. So, you know, Coach McConnell, Coach Lino, we have two co-coordinators, both past graduates that played defense here at Maslin. Coach Dan Hackenbrack, Jason Jarvis, J.P. Simon, Dave Weber. They just do such a great job. They're all they're all Maslin guys. They know what it takes um, to, to play Maslin Tiger defense. And our defense has definitely been the heart and soul of our team this year. There's no doubt about it. They've been put in some tough situations, and they've answered the call. And we're going to need them tonight, uh, today, excuse me, to... Uh, we're going to lean to lean on them, but hopefully not lean on them too much. Right. Um, and, and that's why I was saying our, our offense being able to execute um, when they get down to the end zone, uh, go, uh, red zone is, is critical. And here come the Bulldogs on the field. Real quick, looking at McKinley's defense, 
one main guy to watch. That's linebacker Manny Powell. He wears number 16. He's a tackling machine. Yeah, 60 tackles in five games. He's tough, and, and, and I, and I, I want to mention, um, you know, you mentioned him, but Brian Pinckney's another one. He mm -hmm. has been at, injured the last a few games, but Powell and Pinckney are, are both really physical players. Uh, Brian Pinckney goes at uh, 6'1", 195. He's a three-year starter, and you don't see that a lot at right. Maslin or McKinley, so uh, we, we got to keep our eyes open for him. Um, you know, we, we, we know about our running back situation. Um, you know, our running back situation, unfortunately, uh, we will not see Raekwon Vincent today. He's our starting tailback. He's our leading rusher with about 10 touchdowns this year. He had an unfortunate injury at the end of the Ignatius game last week. His backup, Cam Beasley, is also out. So who's the next guy to step up? That's, you know, Jamatius Portis uh, will be in the lineup. We'll see guys like Wiltrell Hartson. And it's in this game. It's about who can step up, and I think those guys are, are willing to answer the call. So, um, but yeah, Miss McKinley's got some some very good players on defense as Maslin gets ready to answer, uh, to enter the field here. Here come your Tigers. We'll just let you sink it all. Let it sink that's in. That's right. Huh? That's right. Take it all in. 131. We're just. I keep saying it. We're happy we're here. Still get goosebumps. Absolutely. That's a different way to enter for our. Tigers walking in instead of yeah. running in. Tigers in the all orange. That's the first yeah. time we've seen that this haven't year. Haven't seen that uh, for a while now. Um, it's a different look, but. I like it. I think I like it. Um. Now the band getting into for into formation, and we will have our national anthem here to be played. Maslin Tiger Swing Band, and these Tiger fans are very much appreciative of it. Everyone here at WHS TV would like to thank the following sponsors for their financial support, allowing us to bring you today's game. They include Reliable Heating and Cooling, Cosmos Grill, Buell and Oliveri Insurance, Expert Auto Collision, Tower Industries, Discount Tire Outlet, Friends and Family Credit Union, the Maslin YMCA, Stark State College, Downtown Maslin Association, Maslin Tiger Football, the 15 for 15 book. Home Appliance, Progressive, Chrysler, Jeep, Dodge, Ram. The Stark County Mental Health and Addiction Recovery Group. Sergeant Cleans Car Wash, Medicap Pharmacy, Buffalo Wild Wings in Maslin. The WHS Alumni Association, Your Pizza Shop, Maslin Quick Print, Mercy Health Centers, Progressive Chevrolet, Doring Vision Center, Erie Street Pub, Maslin Boys and Girls Club, Mears Nissan, Joey's Kendall Tavern, and MCTV. Thank you to all our sponsors for sure. And uh, as, uh, as Magnus Haynes gets ready to, to come out and kick here, uh, you know, we did, didn't did mention some of our special teams. We've got a couple special kickers, and I know McKinley likes their kicker as well. Uh, Magnus and Alex Bauer have had great seasons. Alex Bauer uh, just set our uh, point uh, PAT record 
uh, last couple weeks ago. So um, kicking game, always important as well. Special teams are huge in this series, and I think the Tigers have a decided advantage. I really do. So Nate Moore in his sixth game. He's 4-1 and one in this game, and Coach Watley for McKinley, 0-1 oh from uh, his first season last year. Here we go there, Mr. Sheets. Excited to be here with Absolutely. you. Absolutely. We'll get you the starting lineups in just a moment as well. Senior Magnus Haynes ready to kick off for the Tigers. Number four, Jonah Lytle. Number nine, Xavier Black are deep for the Bulldogs at the 10-yard line. The sun is out. And we are ready to go. Short kick taken at the 15 by one of the upbacks and a signal for a fair catch. That is number two, Nehemiah Stovall. Yeah, it didn't look like he wanted to, you know, do that. Uh, he had plenty of room. He made that fair catch at about the 18. All right, McKinley on offense. Quarterback Elijah Wesley. The running back, number eight, Brandon Foster. They'll also go with wide receivers. Garrett, Black, and Snow across the front. Walker, Monahan, Hill, Koblenz, and Williams. Those are your starters offensively. Brandon Foster, the running back, we didn't talk about him. He quietly has had three 100-yard-plus rushing games out of the last four times on the field. He's got, he's got the ability. He's got good speed, and uh, Tigers got to be aware of him. We'll check that Tiger defense after the first play. Wesley has two receivers out wide left on first down. High snap. Wesley going to keep. Wesley with running room. Wesley with all kinds of room. Midfield being chased. To the 10, and Ballard shoves him out of bounds down near the two-yard line. Yeah, definitely not the way we wanted to start. They just came out in a tight end wing side and ran a little, uh, you know, a little, uh, just a just a quarterback power is really what it was, and kicked out on the front side. And like I said, this kid can fly. Absolutely, he showed it there. Again, he did not play last week due to injuries. Wow. But the ball is at the one-yard line. Now the fullback in the game is Darian Chine, number 44. Running back is Foster. First and goal at the one. Not the start the Tigers wanted. To give to Foster. And Foster is knocked down. He may have lost he may the have yard. lost the football. Ball came out. Let's I see. The Tigers got it. Wow, what a play. The and Tigers I'm gonna, get a turnover. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to point him out, number 78. That's C.J. Harris made that play there, Dave. Uh, he, he got great pressure on the inside in the A-gap and, and caused that fumble. So one momentum swing one way, <laughs> and we swing it back. Yeah, uh, and Let's we see. talked about that. I mean, but that was a huge play by C.J. Uh, from his defensive tackle position. Tigers offensively, quarterback Zach Catrone running back, Jamacious Porter. Wide receivers are Ballard, Johnson, and Thurman with Lamp. Up front, Lee, Kuth, Woods, Gerritsen, and Rankle. And that's Portis. Portis. Portis, yes. All right. Jamacious. And it looks like Will Trell Hartson is in the backfield. Yeah, he's going to get the start. Hartson straight ahead. Look at that hole. <laughs> the sophomore to the 30, to the 40. Hartrell <laughs> inside the Bulldogs, 35. Wow. Did the defenses <laughs> forget to show up, Jamie? Yeah, I... And uh, we, we, we've been talking about Will Trell for, for quite a long time. We know he's got a lot of potential. They like him. He's just young. But, hey, he comes out with a big play there. Good job by our offensive line as well. Nick Liebler now in it running back for the Tigers. He has played linebacker all season. We've seen very little. But yeah, I think we'll see back. a running back by committee today, Portis, uh, Hartson, and, and now Liebler. And First and 10 at the 34. Liebler straight ahead. Scott blocking. Look at this spin. And Liebler carries it to the 27 of McKinley, a gain of seven on first down. And it's not something he's never done. I mean, he was the running back uh, when he was a freshman. He's been a running back most of his career. Just this year, he's primarily been a linebacker. We'll check McKinley's defensive starters after this play. Hartrell back in the game. He'll get the carry. Look at that hole. And Hartrell parts down. Hartzell, rather, down near the 15-yard line. Let's take a look at McKinley defensively across the front. It's Ivory, O'Quinn, Donald, and McNeil. The linebackers are Powell, McNeil, and Lytle. And the corners, Stovall and Ruffin. The safeties, Fannin and Pinckney. Hartson at running back remains in the game. First and 10 at the Bulldogs 16. Quick toss. Caught by Johnson. Johnson to the 10 and then cut down. He was a step away from breaking that one. Yeah, nice play there by number two uh, for McKinley. That is uh, Nehemiah Stovall, mm -hmm. I think, that made that shoestring tackle. 
Uh, and, you know, Tigers just a nice little flow, a little run pass mix, nice quick tag screen out there. Johnson almost broke that, but a nice gain of four. Second and six. Hartson remains at running back straight ahead. Hartson, and this time McKinley's defense stacks him up. He'll get three close to the nine. It'll bring up third down and about three. Yeah, they're just running the power play, uh, kicking out, wrapping. We know that's been our staple play uh, for years now. And, and our offensive front of, uh, you know, guys like John Cooth and Terrence Rankle, Jaden Woods, um, Dylan Gerritsen, as you mentioned, and uh, uh, they, they're just doing a great job, Todrick Lee up front, of, of opening some seams there for Hartson. Jamie, you've talked about some inconsistencies in the red zone. Here's a big play Here we for go. Third, third offense. and three, yeah. And it's going to be Hartson again. Hartson spins. Hartson, he's going to have the first down. Great right effort by him. Five. Yeah, great effort by him. I mean, uh, you, you look at his size and strength. I mean, Will Trell's 5'10", 200 pounds. So you see some of that power there. Again, just running off tackle, and he makes a nice cut. And you, you said it best, Dave. I mean, we, you know, we've got to execute here. The Tigers got to find a way to, to put this thing in the end zone. On the field for the Tigers in the backfield. Michael Billman, Billman, yep. Mm -hmm. Number 48. And the give to Hartson again. Hartson steps inside, powers his way, and now pushed back. He's going to get credit for a yard to the four. Yeah, just again, inside power play there. And uh, good push by the offensive front, but McKinley a little bit more stout on the inside this time. Across that defensive front from McKinley, they go 270, 260, 185, and 205. Yeah. Good size on both both fronts for Maslin and McKinley. And I think they may have brought in some more beef. Yeah. <laughs> Second and goal at the four. And it's Hartson again, going to try to get outside, cuts in. And he gets to about the three, only a yard. Yeah, tried a little, almost like a buck sweep action there, pulling the front side guard and trying to get Hartson out on the on the perimeter that time. Good job on the perimeter by the defense of, of uh, the Pups. Another big third down play here, third and goal from the four-yard line here. Dave, we'll see uh, what Coach Troxler and, and uh, Coach Major dial up. So a half a yard on that last carry, Hartson to the right of Catrone, third and goal inside the four. Catrone going to keep. Catrone, touchdown. Well, they mixed it up that time. Catrone faked the handoff, took it up the middle, and the offensive line created the hole. Like I said, this, this game's going to be uh, you know, a lot of ups and downs on both sides. Maslin turning a big play for McKinley into a big play. And uh, I love that play call. Because Zach has shown the ability to run the football. I mean, he's not Elijah Wesley. He's not running a 4-4 and a 40 like you might see number seven. But he is capable with his feet. A uh, great play call there. And that's that's a key component there to, to winning this game is scoring in the red zone. Alex Bauer on to attempt the extra point. That's Shane Rue to hold. And that is Dominic Salvino on the snap. Kick up and good. Bauer gives the Tigers a 7 to nothing lead. We have 7, we, excuse me, we have 7.58 to go here in the first quarter of play. I, I mean, I'm just sort of. Let's take a timeout for the Maslin YMCA. Hi, my name is Jim Stanford. I'd like to welcome you to the YMCA of Western Star County, where we have been serving our community for almost 100 years. Everybody is welcome at the YMCA, regardless of their inability to pay. This is where you get strong, and we'll help you do that. Welcome to the Maslin YMCA Child Care, where we offer full day preschool, before and after school in the Maslin and Perry School District, as well as summer camp. You can do it all here at the YMCA. And a special thanks to the Maslin YMCA. We are back, 742 to go in the first quarter. Tigers seven, Bulldogs nothing. Haynes with his second kickoff. It is high, it is deep. It'll be Xavier Black at the six. Dangerous return man. Black cut down back at the 18-yard line. Nice play defensively. T.J. Williams, number eight, makes the stop on special teams. And I think you see it. We saw T.J. last week in the Ignatius game three or four times making plays in the kicking game. It's such a key ingredient uh, to field position. You know, McKinley now starting at the 17-yard line. Uh, great job by T.J. there. We will set that Maslin defense after this play. Coming out in that same set, uh, almost an unbalanced set with a wing to the tackle overside. 
ball at the 18 yard line first and 10 Bulldogs and now a flag comes in we've got a penalty coming up against the Tigers lining up in the neutral zone. So McKinley gets five free yards. Never like to see that. Ball's at the 23 now. First and five for McKinley. And they give to the running back. Not sure who was on the carry that time. Yeah, just McKinley bringing a guy in motion there again, running the off-tackle play. And Caden, did a, Caden Willard, number two, did a nice job setting that edge, edge and uh, nothing really doing there. Jamie, Maybe that about was, a yard. was Rob Jones on the carry. For the Tigers defensively, Miller, Woolard, Billman, Harris across the front. Wise, Lieber, Andrews are the linebackers. Johnson, Wilson, Lamp, Clark, and Brawley are in the Tigers secondary. So getting Maslin uh, or McKinley in that tackle over to their uh, right, running counter back side. Wesley throws. That's intercepted. Almost oh. intercepted. <laughs> Almost coming up with that interception was Andrew Wilson Lamp of the Tigers. He'd like to have that one. Yeah, back. I mean, you don't see Andrew drop too many in his hands there. Uh, McKinley, you know, trying to take advantage of the down and distance there, second short. And it looked like they were running a uh, counter play, but that's a run pass option. And Elijah liked what he saw in the, in the uh, secondary, basically uh, uh, the one versus one matchup. And that, that ball sailed on him. And I'm sure Andrew would love to have that back. Third down and four at the 24. Jones in the backfield with Wesley. Sets up to the right now. Two receivers to the far left. Give to Jones. Jones straight ahead. Jones close to the first down. He'll have it. He'll get to the 29-yard line. It'll be first and 10 McKinley. That time running away from the tackle overside. Um, and uh, nice job there by Jones. 6.46 to go here in the first quarter. Tigers on top, 7 to nothing. Dave Sheets and Jamie Palma with you here on WHS-TV. Big hit by our safety there, number three, Isaiah Clark. As you mentioned, one of our leading tacklers. Uh, he's done a great job in that secondary all year. First and 10 at the 29. And the give is to the running back, Foster. And Foster keeps those feet pumping and he'll get out to close to the 33 a pickup of four counter play off the left hand side and just a good push uh, by McKinley's front because what looked to be maybe a gain of one or two turned into about five yards they'll give him four so it's second and six at the Bulldog 33 Foster remains at running back now they'll check with the sideline. McKinley with their second possession. Foster, now Wesley's going to throw. Has a man wide open. Catch is made. And on the reception is Latrell Snow, number 13. We have a flag on the play, though, and it's going to come back. I think they had a legal formation. Five yards, repeat second down. Yeah, leaving a little bit earlier. Um, and, and, you know, and you see the, the strength, the arm strength of, of number seven, Elijah Wesley there. Uh, and he's tested number 11, Martavian Johnson. Martavian has been a lockdown corner all year for us. So it'll be uh, interesting to see. He's very aggressive, but what he's got to really be, be uh, uh, have an alert about that double move that they like to throw off of that. So the five yard penalty sets the ball back to the 28. McKinley will have a second down and 11 with 5.20 and a running clock here in the first quarter. Tigers lead 7-0. And the give is to Foster. Foster in all kinds of trouble. He'll get a yard to the 29, and that's it. Yeah, credit that play to uh, Caden Wooler doing a nice job again setting that edge. And then the inside interior line and linebackers cleaning up. Looks like uh, Billman might have been there as well. Billman, yeah, playing that uh, defensive tackle position. Third and 10 at the Bulldog 29. Tiger defense hoping to get off the field here on third down. Two receivers to the far side. Wesley to throw. Pressured, looking, looking, being chased. Woolard has him. 
And Wooler drags him down for a loss of two. What athleticism. He gets double team, beats the double team, flushes uh, Wesley out to his right, and you see his speed, speed and athleticism chasing Wesley down from the backside. Great job by number two, Caden Wooler, and that's why so many Division I colleges are interested in him. And uh, give credit to the Tigers' secondary yeah. for that coverage. Yeah, did a great job in the secondary there. You know, Caden goes six foot four, 235 pounds, so he's rangy. And uh, now it's Ala Saad, a 5'10 junior to punt for the Bulldogs inside the Bulldog 20. Martavian Johnson for the Tigers back to receive near his 35. Good kick right to Johnson, should have a return. Johnson to the 40. Johnson, midfield. Tigers will get great field position right at the 49-yard line. Yeah, he's proven uh, that when he gets the ball in his hands, you know, he has, a, he has a great opportunity to make something happen. And he's a good returner because what he does is he catches that thing and he gets north and south, uh, Martavian does. And um, great field position. You can't ask for better field position for uh, Mass's second drive. Their first drive started on the two. <laughs> 3.46 to go in the first quarter. Tigers on top, 7 to nothing on a Zach Catrone short touchdown run. Hartson lines up behind Catrone on first down for the Tigers. Two receivers to the near side, one to the far side. Quick toss out, Ballard. Ballard has it and slips down. That's going to be a pickup of about two. Yeah, and, you know, Jaden's a, a deep threat, so they're playing off him. I like the play call. You know, what he's got to do is just stick his foot in the ground when he catches that ball and get north to south and take five, six yards. Um, he, he, sort of, he sort of came back towards the line of scrimmage and ended up losing a couple yards. So a gain of two, second and eight at the 48 of the Bulldogs. Hartson again. They'll send Johnson in motion. They're going to give it to Johnson. Johnson trying to get around the corner, does 45, and tripped up as he gets to the 43-yard line, and the tackle made by senior Jonah Lytle, number four. Yeah, good tackle by him because that looked like it could have been a uh, he had a lot of space there on the outside, and anytime number 11, 11 Martavian Johnson gets the football in his hands, he's pretty electric uh, on that jet sweep. They had some success with that last week against Ignatius. Two receivers go out wide right, one to the left, and Catron in the gun with Hartson behind him. Give to Hartson straight ahead. Hartson, oh, bust through. Boy, if he'd have one more it. step. He's close to that yeah. first down marker. They're going to give it to him at the 40. First yeah. down, Tigers. Just got tripped up there. He's still running. Just a power play. I mean, that's all we've run so far is just power, kick out, uh, wrapping that inside guard. I think they're seeing what, where, uh, how McKinley's lining up to certain formations and where the numbers are. First and 10. This is Hartson again. Hartson. Hartson will pick up I about three. The ball ball comes out. It looks like. I think the Tigers got it back there. Wow. Or they Number called 19, him down. That's Dylan Geyer. Yeah. Wow. Good job by Dylan disaster. being aware of that. Uh, and, and, yeah, I think that's the concern they have with Will Trell. You know, uh, he's had a, a few fumbles here over the last few weeks. And he's a young player, but mm -hmm. he's just got to take care of that football. Second down and seven from the Bulldog, 37. New running back in the game. That's Liebler. And Liebler going to get a yard. He'll be close to two to the 35. Off tackle again with, with uh, Liebler. And, and, and the good thing, you know, both plays, two yards. Uh, fortunately, we were, we were able to jump on that fumble. But third and six, there's a lot you can do. Uh, Coach Troxler and, and his offensive staff have a lot in play for third and six. So they're in a good situation here. Uh, let's see what, uh, what they decide, run or pass. 1-10 with a running clock remaining here in the first quarter. Catrone keeps. Catrone straight ahead, takes a pop, and he'll get close to the 32. It's going to bring up fourth down and two. Yeah, he took a, he took a hard hit there. But Zach's shown his toughness throughout the year. And it's going to bring up decision time, and I think we be interested to see what we decide to do here. Dave, I think we're going to go for it uh, on the 32-yard line. That's probably there's really not many other options. You kick it, you're probably going to kick it in the end zone, brings it back to the 20. 
Billman in at tight end on that right side to give to Liebler. Liebler's got the first down. Nick Liebler inside the Bulldog 25 to the 24. Yeah, as I mentioned, he's played running back all his life. You see some athleticism there uh, by Nick. He hasn't played at all this year, but um, did a nice job sort of leaping a would-be tackler. Again, just running the power off the right-hand side. And good pickup, first down. Looks like the Tigers will get off one more play. We're down to 14 seconds. Clock is running. Liebler remains in at running back. Catrone going to pass it out quickly. Johnson gets a nice block out there by Andrew Wilson-Lamp. Johnson will be close to that first down marker down near the 15-yard line. Great job there by 21 Andrew Wilson-Lamp. Um, their corner read that really well, but he stayed on that block. You're allowed to block as long as you throw the ball behind the line of scrimmage, so you are allowed to block uh, while that ball's in the air. Good job by him and uh, Martavian collecting that and getting nine yards. Nine yards on the play, as you mentioned. It'll be second down and one at the Bulldog. 15, just one second left. This will be the final play of the quarter, barring a penalty. Liebler straight ahead. Liebler following his blocking, and he'll take it down near the 11-yard line. That's the end of the first quarter. Our score, Maslin 7, McKinley nothing here on WHS-TV. Back after this from Doring Vision Center. Doring Vision Center in downtown Maslin is a primary care optometry clinic. They use the latest technology and can treat most eye disease conditions. Doring Vision Center can fit all types of contact lenses. They welcome emergency eye visits and same day appointments may be available. Most insurances are accepted. Their optical showroom has a wide variety of frames. From budget packages to designer brands, they have it all. Doring Vision Center, located in downtown Maslin. Want to turn your old, rusty hunk of junk in for a nicer ride, but think it's not even worth a tank of gas? Think again. Progressive Chevrolet will give you $5,000 for your trade, no matter the condition. That's right, $5,000 for any trade guaranteed when you buy any factory-certified pre-owned car, truck, or sport utility at Progressive Chevrolet. Needs repairs? No problem. Get five grand for your trade guaranteed only at Progressive Chevrolet in Massillon. T-I-G-E-R-S, T-I-G-E-R-S, W-H-S is the best. The Washington High School Alumni Association, keeping Tigers connected. Please join us and send a contribution today. For nearly 40 years, Expert Auto Collision has been serving Stark County with premium customer service and collision repair. Bring your wrecked vehicle and they'll immediately get to work with you and your insurance company to get your vehicle back to pre-accident condition. Expert Auto Collision's professional crew has the experience and the drive to bring your damaged vehicle back to life. Don't let an accident get your goat. Come see me, Tara, at Expert Auto Collision, the only female-owned and operated collision repair center in Northeast Ohio. Expert Auto Collision, where we meet good people by accident. Back at Paul Brown Tiger Stadium, thanks to Doring Vision Center, Progressive Chevrolet, the WHS Alumni Association, and Expert Auto Collision. We start the second quarter. The Tigers have a first and 10 at the McKinley 11-yard line. Yeah, key, uh, key possession again here. Portis into the game. Portis breaks a tackle. Portis is down to the one-yard line. So that's the first we've seen uh, Jamatius this week. You see his uh, his ability to run the football. Great, great push. I mean, just a lot of uh, really our offensive lines dominating in this football. First and goal at the one. Portis, Portis rather to the left of Catron. Portis again, straight ahead. Portis, not this time. Just do want to do a good job of making sure you take care of the football down here. Two hands over the ball. Uh, he yeah. must not have pushed in there. Nope. I, you know, it's, it's really hard for us to tell from this angle. Well, Jamie, it's life in the trenches down there. Right. <laughs> Tigers' offensive line has been in control yeah, so bringing far. Bringing in a couple tight ends in, in uh, Willard and Geyer. See if we can get that push. Portis again. Yeah, Portis, touchdown, Maslin. Just great push up front. 
You know, Jamatius is, you know, he can, he's not small either. He goes 5'11", 220 pounds. And good job by him off first contact, leaning over the goal line. Momentum swinging in the Tigers' way. And, and, and as I mentioned, you mentioned, what I really like is, is we're seeing Madison control the line of scrimmage early 11, on. 11 one to go here in the first half. Maslin extends their lead to 13 to nothing. Alex Bauer on to attempt the extra point. Good snap, good hold, kick up. Kick is good by Alex Bauer. Timeout on the field, now this word from Friends and Family Credit Union. Welcome to Friends and Family Credit Union, where we believe every member is a friend of the family. Hi, I'm Nick Langenfeld, President and CEO of Friends and Family Credit Union. Friends and Family Credit Union provides loans, savings, checking, and other financial services to anyone who lives, works, worships, or attends school in Stark County. We provide financial needs in the most reasonable and cost-effective way. What are you waiting for? Stop in one of our locations today to become a friend of the family. Back at Paul Brown Tiger Stadium, thanks to Friends and Family Credit Union. 11.01 to go here in the first half. Maslin leads 14-0. Yeah, first half statistics. Uh, Maslin, 15 rushes for 119 yards, and they were 3 for 3. Uh, total of 134 yards total offense. McKinley, 88. Most of those on Elijah Wesley's 81-yard run. So pretty dominant performance in the first quarter, with exception to that first play. It'll be Short Xavier kick. Black at the 15 to the 20. He's explosive, but the Tigers do a nice job on kick coverage. That Getting was, uh, down there. Number 20, Freddie Lennox Jr., as well as number six uh, for the Tigers, Ryan Zenkovich on that tackle. Good job by those Tigers, and it's first down and 10 for McKinley at their own 27-yard line. The Bulldogs trail 14 to nothing here in the second quarter. be interesting to see we haven't really seen them run the football with uh, Wesley much since that first play so interesting to see if the uh, if McKinley comes back to something uh, with number seven in a run pass and option there, there is there Wesley is. on the carry oh, and Wesley hit. is hit knocked down good play defensively Austin Browley came in and laid the wood yeah you know, we've we've uh, that safety position over the last three years and we've had just guys Dean Cl the Dean Clarks of the world and last year the the uh, Luke Murphys and mm -hmm. Robbie Page. And uh, you know now we've got Isaiah Clark and Austin Brawley. Just, I mean, they've been so dependable back there and uh, great tacklers. Good job by Austin there. A gain of four. It'll be second down and six. Wesley looks to the sideline. Jones, the running back. He'll get the carry straight ahead. Jones is brought down right at the line of scrimmage. Maybe a yard on that carry. That was Caden Willard again coming off of his uh, weak side outside linebacker spot. And we've seen the impact that number two has had. He's the only returning starter on this defense. Um, so he's used to playing in this kind of uh, magnitude of a game. And great job by him. It'll be third down and five for the Bulldogs at their own 33. Clock running, 9.50 to go here in the first half. Wesley again looks to the sideline. Has Jones at running back. Has two receivers near the, the near side. Snow and Garrett. And Wesley going to keep. Wesley cut down back at the 30-yard line. How about that play from Martavian Johnson? Got to wow. stay away, though. Don't want to get that flag. Yeah, you know, and he's fired up. I mean, uh, big play by him. Shows his athleticism. He's in a one-on-one -on -one with number seven. But, uh, I mean, Martavian has, has been making plays on both sides of the football as well as special teams all year. So not surprised to see him make that play. He's a really good tackler. He's only 5'9", uh, 170 pounds, but does a really good job of, of, uh, of running through the legs of, of, uh, of would-be runners. And good job, Martavian. Fourth down and seven. And it's Al-Assad to punt near the 20. Tigers coming. He'll kick it away from Johnson this time near midfield. Takes a Bulldog hop inside the 40 and rolls to the 38. So again, Maslin's defense, three and out three against and out. McKinley. Yeah, since that first uh, big run by uh, Wesley. Really haven't shown much. Uh, good job, Tiger defense against the run. 8.42 left in the first half. Maslin on top, 14 to nothing. 
Yeah, McKinley's. This is a, this is a. I would say this is a key uh, possession of the game. You know, they're down 14 nothing. The momentum's in Maslin's favor. They've really got to get a stop here. Being down 21 nothing is is going to be a, a tough hole to climb out of. First and ten for the Tigers. Give to Hartson. Hartson straight ahead. Looking for running room, look at that effort. Hartson carries to the 41, and that's a tough three yards for the sophomore. Yeah, just waiting uh, waiting for his big lineman. Uh, I think that was John Cooth coming around there, number 65. And uh, Will Child showed, he showed good patience and good pickup of about three, four yards. Tigers with a second down and seven now. Ball close to the 42. Hartson remains in the game. Quick toss. Nope. Cartone fakes. Now he's going to keep. He's in trouble, and he'll be slammed down back inside the 40. And there's big number 16, Manny Powell, with yeah. the play. Great decision by Zach Catrone. Uh, called their, uh, their routine RPO tag screen uh, is what our offense calls that. And the McKinley defender corner read that perfectly that could have been a pick six so good decision there by Zach to hold it and give us another uh, another down here even though it is third and nine ball at the 39 and now a whistle blows official timeout clock stops with 738 to go here in the first half now we'll reset Hartson at running back behind Catrone McKinley nearly jumped offside Powell lined up this time. Jamie had a defensive end spot on yeah. the far side. Ball at the 39. They'll put Hartson in motion. Catrone to throw. He'll throw middle. Brawley. Oh, cannot hang on. Down near the McKinley 45 pass was just a little behind him. A little behind him, but I think one that number four will tell you he's usually going to catch. So McKinley's defense comes up with a stop. Good throw by Zach. I mean, just again, a little bit behind him. Uh, but I think, uh, you know, those are ones that Austin usually comes up with. But as I mentioned, that was a big, big series, big possession. You know, if, if Masson comes down, scores, goes up 21-0, you know, who knows what this thing turns into. So uh, good job by the McKinley defense there. Haynes to punt. Oh, High no. snap, way over his head. You got head. time. You got time. Gets it away. Wow. And what a play by Magnus Haynes, and look at that, no return inside the 25. Wow. Well, we see why he's a Division I punter there. Stayed calm, you know, snap, sailed over his head, did a good job of staying calm and uh, set his feet. He had, he had a, the time to get it off. Turn of events there because, you know, without that punt, you know, McKinley's looking at great field position. Well, McKinley's defense does the job the last time. Let's see what their offense has in store. Number eight, Brandon Foster back in it, running back for the Bulldogs. This time they'll send trips to the near side. Three receivers on first and ten and at their 24. And Wesley to throw. Ball thrown. Catch is made out near the 35. A diving grab by DeJour Garrett. That was a heck of a heck of a snag. It's, I, I thought maybe it hit the ground, but official had a good view on it. You see uh, Wesley's arm strength. McKinley getting into an unbalanced trip set, tackle over, uh, bringing three receivers to uh, the unbalanced side. Second down and one at the 33, and Wesley to keep. Wesley stood up. Wesley going to be dragged down, and it's number 36, Mike Miller. Yeah, Mike Miller's been making plays all year uh, at his defensive end spot. Shows his athleticism, but McKinley able to pick up that first down and move the change. Yep, their, uh, his forward progress took him to the 35, so it's enough for a Bulldog first down. 6-18, clock running here in the first half. Tigers on top, 14 yeah, nothing. I think we're going to start seeing a little bit more of a steady diet of number seven tucking the ball. Uh, we, you know, we saw what he can do if he finds a crease. So the Tigers' defense needs to be ready for that. Now another whistle. Official on the far side blew the whistle. Now they'll reset. Six minutes to go in the half. First and ten. Unbalanced trip set again. And Wesley to throw. Screen pass. 
And that is number 13, Snow. And his forward progress takes him to the 40. That's a pickup of five yards on first down. Yeah, that time he had an option to go to the, the tailback screen off the right-hand side or the jailbreak screen. He decided to, to throw it to Snow off the left-hand side. The Tigers defended it pretty well. Uh, Liebler making that first, first hit. Second and five at the Bulldog 40. Foster remains in it running back behind Wesley. And the give to Foster. Foster breaks through, picks up a couple more to the 43. It'll bring up third down and two. Yeah, he did a good job on that read, uh, read option play. Uh, he takes the give, and it looked like he was going to have no gain. He was able to score it out there for a couple yards and set up a third and two. Uh, good tackle by Brawley there, where that could have been a first down. 4.43 and a running clock here in the first half. Third and two, McKinley at their own 43. Wesley fakes, he'll keep it. Forward progress and he will get to the 46. It'll be a Bulldog first down. He took some uh, some big hits there, mm -hmm. that's for sure. And you know that's what uh, the Maslin defense has to do that. They gotta make sure that every time the number seven it turns into a running back that they're, they're gonna make them feel it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, playing in that at that quarterback position, so but able to pick enough up. They just ran a little quarterback counter play there. You see the shiftiness. Uh, he really didn't have much, but he was able to wiggle himself around to get uh, two yards. First and ten at the Bulldog, 46. Foster remains in it, running back trips to the near side for the Bulldogs, and Wesley looks to throw, fakes, and Woolard has him and drops him back near the 35. Wow. Number two came to play today. Wow. <laughs> Caden Woolard with the sack. Yeah, he's a mismatch uh, for their offensive line. And uh, he's just got such great athleticism. I mean, he's 235 pounds, 6'4", but, I mean, he can run, and he's athletic, and he's long, and uh, he's got a lot of experience. So That is a nine-yard loss, second and 19, ball back at the Bulldog, 37. Number three into the ball game, Tam Church. Still another running back for McKinley. Church goes 5'11", 195, he's a junior. Wesley to throw, ball in the air down the field. Andrew Wilson Lamp out there, and incomplete as the pass was intended for Garrett, but Wilson Lamp was with him stride for stride. And now wow. there's gonna be a flag come in against the Maslin bench. Yeah, it's probably gonna be a sideline warning, Andrew Wilson. hopefully. Oh. Maslin bench, 15 yards. Maybe not. That hurts. Let's talk about the way, uh, I guess, to look for the positive there. Andrew played that textbook. Stayed on the upfield shoulder. That yeah, is a sideline warning. Oh. I was going to say, I, I think one of our coaches came out on the field a little bit too much. Usually they'll give you a warning. The next one will be a, uh, a penalty. 3.14 to go in the first half. Maslin leads 14 to nothing. McKinley with a third down and 19 now at their own 37. I'll be honest with you, you know, the, the Tiger defense needs to be ready for some kind of just run play. Uh, third and 19 is a lot of yards. But uh, credit Andrew on that coverage, uh, doing a great job staying on top of that receiver. Brian Pinckney, number 10, checks in as a wide receiver. He's on the far side. Third and long, and now a timeout by McKinley. 3.14 to go in the first half. Now this word from the Maslin Boys and Girls Club. The Boys and Girls Club of Maslin has been at the forefront of youth development, instilling a sense of competence, usefulness, belonging, and influence. The greatest contributions to the lives of our youth, our communities, our nation, and the world are the life lessons taught every moment of every hour of every club day. The youth of today become the leaders of tomorrow. Great futures start here. We've told you about the Mirrors Must See Guarantee, but don't take our word for it. Uh, they made it clear from the first time I walked in that uh, their job didn't end 
uh, once they handed me the keys, uh, I serviced my vehicles here, not only the one I bought here, but my mother's, and the way they treated me with respect, follow-up calls, but the folks here at Mears Nissan treat you that way from start to finish. See us at 4825 West Tuscarora Street in Canton or online at MearsNissan.com. Thanks to Mears Nissan and the Maslin Boys and Girls Club. Third down and 19 for McKinley at their own 37. 314 remaining here in the first half. Maslin leads 14 to nothing. Tigers going to a three-man front. You just got to be careful that uh, you don't let number seven run around back there with too much time. There's that quarterback draw, as I mentioned. And we just got to tackle him. Good job. Yeah. Keeping everything in front of you. Yeah, Wesley will pick up about three to the 40. And now timeout, Maslin. Tigers take a timeout with 3.03 remaining. We will step aside. And this word from Tower Industries. Order the new book, The Maslin Tigers, 15 for 15, by author and 2019 coach David Lee Morgan Jr. Go behind the scenes, in the locker room, and on the field in the new book that follows the 2019 Maslin Tigers season. Order at 15for15book.com. Use coupon code WHS-TV for free shipping. Thanks to Tower Industries and Maslin Tiger Football 15 for 15 book. We are back. It is fourth down and 16. And again, the punter, Al Saad, on to kick for McKinley. Martavian Johnson back deep for the Tigers near his 25. Back to return, Martavian Johnson. Tigers trying to conserve some clock and maybe push for another score here before the half. It's a short floater. It'll be Johnson on the run at the 35. Johnson with a block. Ah, it's going to come back. There's a flag. Look at this run by Johnson, but it's going to come back. Johnson to the 10. Johnson to the house. But unfortunately, it's not going to count. Yeah, they're going to get uh, number seven, Tanner Pierce, tried to throw his hands up. You know, you, 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 it's tough. Blocking in the kicking game is tough because there's so much space. Mm. We've had, a, we've had a, a problem with that all year, uh, blocking in the back, holding. You know, you go back and you look at that great effort by by Tanner. Uh, I don't know if he he really got a hold of him or not, but that's what the officials saw. And unfortunately, big play Receiving called back. Team. Ten yards. And don't forget, coming up at the half, we'll have the Maslin Tigers swing band and their wonderful halftime show. So. Yeah, they, they get, you know, looking back, I, I was looking at the block the whole time, and I think you look at it, it was a 50-50 call. It could have went either way. Um, it wasn't as if he was grabbing a hold of the jersey, but he might have had a little bit of a hold on him early on. He tried to let go, throw his hands up, but mm. the official wasn't having it. Still, you know, still plenty of time for, for our offense uh, to go down and, and get points. First down and 10 for the Tigers at their own 28-yard line. Missing an offensive lineman. Hartson remains in at running back for the Tigers. Two receivers to the far side, one to the near. Catron at quarterback. And a first and ten. Tigers still have two more timeouts to work with, as does McKinley. It's going to be Hartson. Hartson pounds it to the 30. He'll carry the rock for two yards. Second and eight. Off tackle there to the right. Uh, Dylan Geyers done a nice job for the Tigers all year coming in tight end at a, at a uh, H back position and blocking second and eight from the Maslin 30 Let's see if the Tigers go to the air here and they give us to Hartson again and he is knocked down it's Powell yep. yeah, you see number 16 there and the uh how physical he is. 
He runs like he was shot out of a cannon. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he came up and put, you know, put a textbook tackle on uh, on Hartson. So now third and eight. And we're under two minutes. Running clock, 148 at the 30-yard line. And Catrone to throw. It's a screen off the hands of Andrew Wilson Lamp. It'll be fourth down. Let him just a little bit too much. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if, if, if Zach thought he was going to be coming in a little bit faster. I think the play was there. It might have might have opened up and, and had something there, but just weren't able to pick, yeah. execute that pitch and catch. I'd like to see them come back to that. Yeah, yeah. So Haynes in punt formation for the Tigers at the 15. Stovall is back near the 35 for McKinley. High snap. Another one. Haynes gets it away. Great kick. Stovall hauls it in at the 25. In trouble. Stovall going to be knocked down right near the 25. TJ Williams line. been calling his name. Great job getting down there by number eight. Yeah, great special teams play. And uh, as well as number 10 for the Tigers, that's uh, Nate Watkins. And they did a good job of just you know, holding their ground. You're not, not reaching, keeping, keeping your feet uh, underneath you and, and uh, did a good job of pinning him back. It'll be interesting to see what McKinley does here with a, big, uh, with a minute and 28 to go. Yeah, there's a minute 28. They have two timeouts. Cam Church back in at running back behind Wesley. Now yeah, to his left. I think if you know if they were winning the game, we'd probably see a little bit more conservative approach, but being down 14 nothing. There's a quick toss. And a great play defensively. The catch made by Foster, but the Tigers were not fooled. Yeah, great job, uh, Martavian Johnson. Another great tackle by him. And as I mentioned, they're, they're, they're hitting some of these short things. We've just got to be prepared for, you know, uh, you know, a, a fake screen and then mm -hmm. trying to go up top, keep everything in front of you. You got a minute, a minute left. Um, you just got to be smart in the secondary here. Yeah, that was a loss of two, by the way. Second and 12 from the 25. 51 seconds, running clock left in the half. Tigers just don't want to give up a big play here. Wesley to throw, and now Marcus Watley, head coach of the Bulldogs, calls for a timeout. And we'll step aside after this word from Home Appliance. It's where we come together, where we are rested, nourished, and renewed. It's where convenience and performance surround the ones we love. It's home. Home Appliance and Whirlpool help homes happen with innovation you can depend on and quality you can trust. Right now, purchase select Whirlpool Kitchen and Whirlpool Laundry Appliances and save. And pay no interest when paid in full within 12 months. Home Appliance, where your home comes together. Hey, Massillon and Western Stark County, Mercy Medical Center has you covered. In fact, you're doubly covered with health centers in both Massillon and Jackson, offering services like stat care, primary care, lab, imaging, heart, sleep, pain, and various therapy services. With locations at 2935 Lincoln Way West and 7337 Caritas Circle Northwest, we've got you covered with double the health care options. Back here at Maslin, it's second and 12, thanks to Mercy Health Centers and Home Appliance. 42 seconds to go in the half. Yeah, interested to see what Coach Watley decides to do here. Uh, only 42 seconds left. They've only got one timeout left. They have to take a shot. Oh, bad snap. Wesley oh, going to run. And he'll be brought down at the 20-yard line. Masson will probably take a timeout here. They do. They do. We will step aside with 35 seconds left in the half. Now this word from Discount Tire Outlet. Your first set of wheels didn't come with hassles. It can be that way again at Tire Pros. Earn up to a $100 Visa prepaid card when you purchase four new qualifying light truck and SUV general tires. Stop by your local Discount Tire Outlet Tire Pros in Maslin today. Tire Pros, hassle-free, guaranteed. 
If you're like most people, your life is a series of brush strokes, large and small. Moments from the everyday to the extraordinary. As you move through your world, let Grange Insurance and an independent agent put the finishing touches on an insurance plan to meet your needs. Now, that's a stroke of genius. Buell and Oliveri Insurance is your Grange Independent Agent in Maslin. For auto, home, life, or business insurance, call or visit our website today. Thanks to Buell and Oliveri Insurance and Discount Tire Outlet. After the Maslin timeout, 35 seconds to go here in the first half. Third down and 15 from the 20. Wesley to throw. In trouble. Chased by Miller. Miller going to drag him down back inside the five-yard line. Another timeout by the Tigers. 28-second smart move there by Coach Moore. We're going to step aside once again for this word from Mears Nissan. We've told you about the Mears must-see guarantee, but don't take our word for it. Well, before we came in to test drive the vehicle, my husband and I had done some research on the website, and we really enjoyed how easy Mears Nissan's website was to use. We weren't really sure at that time because we didn't need to buy a car. Very low key, low pressure, let us you know, take the weekend to think about it. So it was really easy peasy for us. See us at 4825 West Tuscarora Street in Canton or online at MearsNissan.com. There was a time when 10 miles to the gallon was acceptable. Today's 40 plus mile per gallon cars weren't even in the rear view mirror back then. Of course, this Linux air conditioner wasn't on the radar either. It's solar ready the quietest, most energy efficient air conditioner you can own. It's time to live in the now. Call Reliable Heating and Cooling for the most advanced technology in heating and air conditioning. When you're ready to live in the now, call Reliable Heating and Cooling. Lennox, innovation never felt so good. Thanks to Reliable Heating and Cooling and Mears Nissan, back with 28 seconds to go in the first half, and McKinley with a fourth and 32 at their three yard line. Snap away, it's a short kick. Hits it to 25, and Johnson lets it roll out to the 37 yard line. So 18 seconds left, Jamie, and Maslin has one timeout. Yeah, we know, we, you know we, to get into Alex Bauer range, we, we might need about 10 yards. Points right before the, uh, the half would be huge, going up three scores. Um, I got to give credit. We haven't didn't have a lot of time there with the timeouts. I mean, Mike Miller and Caden Wooler, they're two, you know, bookends. You call them. They've they've definitely dominated the game. It'll be interesting to see if uh, McKinley tries to double team them because they cannot protect Elijah Wesley uh, with those two guys. And, and you know, and they're they're special players. So after the punt, Hartson remains in at linebacker to the right of Catrone at the 38. First and 10 for the Tigers. Again, just 18 seconds left here in the first half. And Catrone to throw. Down the middle of the oh, field, has him. a man open. Ballard ah. broke up at the last second. Yeah. And a great defensive play by Xavier Black. You know, Zach, Zach was about a second off on that. He needed to throw that earlier. Mm. Um, Jaden had his man beat from the onset. And he just, just held on to the ball a little too long. I don't know if he, he saw him late, um, but that's that's six points, um, unfortunately. But still got 12 seconds. A first down will stop the clock. So, if, if, you know, if the Tigers can get 10 yards here, uh, get up get up to the line of scrimmage, spike the ball, um, that is in, in range of uh, Alex Power. He has hit a 42-yard field goal this year. Yep, Masson still with that one timeout, 12 seconds left. Catrone gives to Hartson. Hartson down near the 33. Sure. And timeout, Tigers. No, we don't have any. I don't really know why we did that. Oh, the play clock's going to run out? What? And at the end of the first half. Oh, I'm not sure what happened there. Yeah. A little confusion. All right, it's halftime. Our score, Maslin 14, McKinley nothing. Now this word from Joey's Kendall Tavern. Why do so many folks go to Joey's Kendall Tavern? It's the food! Like their 10-ounce burgers and fries, just $5 every Wednesday. Why do folks go to Joey's Kendall Tavern? It's the food! Half-price appetizers like these every night, 9 to 11. Why do folks go to Joey's Kendall Tavern? It's the food! 
like two steaks for $12 every Friday. Joey's Kendall Tavern for Maslin's best burgers, great steaks, appetizers, and so much more. Back here at Maslin's Paul Brown Tiger Stadium, the Tigers lead it 14 to nothing over McKinley at the half. Our thanks to Stark County Mental Health and Addiction Recovery and Joey's Kendall Tavern. Let's turn things over now to the Maslin Tiger Swing Band.
A Maslin staple for over 40 years, Maslin Quick Print is your one-stop shop for all your printing needs. Before you shop the internet, come downtown to see Maslin Quick Print first. Experience their top-notch customer service and offset printing capabilities. They also specialize in copy services, print media, brochures, invitations, and much more. Visit Maslin Quick Print on 1st Street Northeast in downtown Maslin. I knew I didn't want to graduate with college debt or find out I didn't like my job after spending four years in school. Stark State College made it possible for me to pursue a career I'm passionate about at a price I could afford. And now I'm a certified occupational therapy assistant. When people find out I graduated debt free, a lot of them say, hey, I should have done that. You can. Stark State can help you go after a good paying, in demand career you'll love at a price you can afford. Hello, I am Paul J. Salvino, and I am humbled to serve as the superintendent of the Maslin City Schools. On Tuesday, November 3rd, the Maslin City Schools will have a levy renewal on the ballot. This no new taxes renewal will be issue 32. Issue 32 was originally passed in 1996, and the dedicated residents of the Maslin City Schools have been extremely supportive every five years during elections since then. Issue 32 is a five-year renewal that equals no new taxes. Issue 32 will generate $2 million per year for our schools. With the recent loss of school funding due to the COVID-19 pandemic, this renewal will be critical for our organization. On behalf of the Maslin City Schools, I ask you to exercise your civic duty on Election Day, Tuesday, November 3rd, 2020. Thank you and go Tigers! of questions about the coronavirus. I'm here to share some simple steps you can take to help protect yourself and others. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Wash your hands often with soap and water for 20 plus seconds. Cover your cough or sneeze with a tissue. Clean and disinfect surfaces and objects. Wash hands after touching commonly used items. Together, we can help slow the spread. So I just moved in with his family and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting. Oh, poop already. You're making me nervous. Oh, okay. I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this for his sake. My name is Jaden Wilson, and you're watching Mass and Tiger football only on WHS TV. The Eye of the Tiger. We are back at Maslin's Paul Brown Tiger Stadium at the half. It's the Tigers 14 and the Bulldogs nothing. Special thanks to our sponsors, Stark State College and Maslin Quick Print. Another great halftime performance by our Tiger Swing Band. And Jamie, I don't have to tell you this, but the band always sound, sounds better when the Tigers are in the lead. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Neal and his staff put on a first class effort each week and that was a wonderful performance. Uh, so kudos to all of them, as well as our cheerleaders. I did want to give a shout out to our senior cheerleaders, Kaylee Brown, Captain Jordan uh, Ligel, Captain uh, Riley Jadell, Emma Moser, Eve Miller, Kayla Davis, Caitlin Lutz, Abigail Evans, uh, and uh, thanks to Christy McCarthy and her assistant, Sarah Ligel. Um, they just do a great job with our Mass and Tiger cheerleaders as well. And I know that's legal, pronounced legal. Legal, so sorry. Jordan and Sarah. So. Sorry, sorry about that. That's okay. To the legal family. Um, yeah, first half uh, definitely in the dominated with exception to one play by our Tigers. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it, it sort of feels like me and you were talking here at halftime. It's 14 to nothing. It feels like it should be a little bit more than that, but we'll take 14 nothing in a Massa McKinley game at halftime. But I feel like the the only thing that I have a concern of 
is is the fact that we it seemed like we had the ability to maybe put this game away uh, with another score, and we weren't able to do that. But uh, first half stats, I'll read some of those. 85 yards for McKinley on 22 plays. So our defense is dominated as usual, um, except for that one play. So if you think about it, 85 yards on 22 plays, one of those plays was 81 yards. Yeah, right. So, you know, through the, th from the losses of yardage and some of those other things, you know, they've only given up four yards outside of that one big right. play that uh, Elijah Wesley, that, that first run he had. Uh, 29 uh place for 153 yards for Maslin, uh, mostly on the ground, uh, 138 yards rushing. Will Trell Hartson, 12 carries, 95 yards. So, you know, we knew that Raekwon Vincent would be out today. Um, we knew that uh, Cam Beasley was also out today. So we, had, we needed a guy to step up, and Will Trell's done that. Nick mm -hmm. Liebler's had four carries for 20 yards and one yards. Portis, uh, three carries, 11 yards. So the, the guys uh, running back by committee getting the job done. All right. Um, Elijah Wesley, uh, 62 yards on 10 carries. And as I mentioned, that big 81-yard run. But he has lost 31 yards uh, by, to the hands of guys like Caden Woolard and uh, Mike Miller. Uh, he's 3 for 5 for uh, 12 yards passing. He's been sacked two times. And uh, the leading receiver is DeJore Garrett, one catch for nine yards. Brian Pinckney leads the defense and tackles uh, with four and a half. Uh, for the Tigers individually, as I mentioned, Hartz and 12 carries, 95 yards. Liebler, 421. Portis, 3 for 11. And Catrone, 3 for uh, 6 yards and a touchdown as well as Portis having a touchdown. All right, let's take a timeout. This word from Sergeant Clean Car Wash and Progressive Chrysler Deep Jeep Dodge Ram. Sergeant Clean's Car Wash in downtown Maslin is your one-stop car cleaning headquarters. Formerly Yen's Car Wash, Sergeant Cleans is veteran owned and is proud to now be part of the Maslin community. Sergeant Cleans offers unlimited monthly plans and free vacuums starting at under $20. Their friendly and hardworking team members are ready to make your car washing experience the best ever. Drive on in to Sergeant Cleans Car Wash on 1st Street in Maslin. Want to turn your old, rusty hunk of junk in for a nicer ride, but think it's not even worth a tank of gas? Think again. Progressive Jeep Ram will give you $5,000 for your trade, no matter the condition. That's right, $5,000 for any trade, guaranteed. When you buy any factory-certified pre-owned car, truck, or sport utility at Progressive Jeep Ram. Needs repairs? No problem. Get five grand for your trade, guaranteed. Only at Progressive Jeep Ram in Massillon. And a special thanks to Progressive Chrysler, Jeep Dodge Ram, and Sergeant Clean Car Wash. We are ready to start the second half. Dave Sheets along with Jamie Palma here on WHS-TV, our student crew doing an outstanding job here today. Maslin leads it 14 to nothing. Jamie, the Tigers will get the ball, and this series is a, is a big one for both teams. Yeah, and, and, and I don't necessarily think that Maslin, uh, an ideal series would be go down and and score a touchdown. If we can go down and get any points, that puts us up three scores. That's huge in this game with the way our defense is playing. Um, but if anything, uh, establish field position, uh, take care of the football. Um, don't put our defense in a bad position. And, and I think, uh, you know, you keep playing that field position game. We've seen the, the weapon that Magnus Haynes is. You know, Magnus mm -hmm. Haynes has had uh, some some great punts. He's got two punts for 82 yards, and we know one of them was 30 yards behind the line of scrimmage. So uh, it's okay if we have to punt the ball and establish field position. DeMonte Marshall, a 6'2 junior, number 34, kicking off for the Bulldogs. And it's an end-over-end -end kick taken by Johnson at the 15. Johnson to the 30, good field position. Martavian Johnson out to the 35-yard line. Just getting north and south there. As I mentioned, you know, Martavian does a good job of doing that. Uh, and that's great field position to start the game. So the Tigers will get good field position. Opening series here in the second half. Martavian was our leading receiver with two catches for 13 yards in the first half. Tigers only threw the ball six times. Uh, so really trying to establish the run game, continue to dominate up front. Hartson remains in at running back. The 5'10 sophomore to the right of Catrone on first down. Hartson will get the carry. Hartson straight ahead, fighting for yardage, and he'll get 
about three out near the 37. Yeah, it looked like he had a, a second push there, but good job by uh, McKinley defender number 22, Jamar Barsic, uh, coming up from his linebacker spot uh, to make sure that uh, Hartson only got a gain of two. So a second down and a long seven, if you will, just shy of the 32-yard line. Again, Hartson in the backfield with Catrone. Give to Hartson again. Hartson running room, crosses the 40. Hartson out near the 42, close to the 43-yard line. Good push again there on the left-hand side. Hartson showing his power. Rodney Donald, number 15. Defensive lineman with a tackle for McKinley. Portis checks in now. Get a fresh set of legs in there. Third and two for the Tigers. Shy of the 43. About a yard and a half, actually. 10.45, clock running, third quarter. Tigers up 14-0. And the give to Portis. Portis straight ahead, and he runs into a stone wall, and McKinley... Makes the stop, getting in there, number 70, Sky Curtis, a 6'1 senior, leading the charge. Yeah, real uh, real conservative, three three uh, off-tackle plays there. That time, uh, McKinley owning the line of scrimmage. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they, they you know they got a talking to at halftime, and, and they're playing with a little bit more pride up front there. So Magnus Haynes back inside his 30. We've had two high snaps. Let's see how we do on this one. Good snap this time. Haynes gets it away, and he hammers it. Stovall drifting back, signaling fair catch, and he makes that fair catch back inside the 15. And, Jamie, we talked at the start of this one about the presence of special team play like yeah. Magnus Haynes and Alex Bauer for Maslin. 42's come to play today. Uh, you know, punting is not always a bad thing. You establish great field position there. Uh, and better snap that time. So they, they got that because I think the first two snaps have been high. So we got that shirt up. And I mean, McKinley's, you know, they're in a tough spot here. They have not been able to move the ball very well. And they're on the 12-yard line. So great job by our special teams unit, as you mentioned. First and 10, Wesley, the quarterback in the gun, has Jones, the running back, to his left. And Wesley going to keep. Wesley cuts it across the 10. And he'll get maybe a yard. To 20, the 13? Yeah, 22, Jaden Wise doing a great job staying home at his outside linebacker spot, as well as uh, you see the athleticism of Mike Miller. You know, he, he closes and then he re redirects, uh, and, and, and uh, those two guys do a great job of keeping Wesley from getting any big gain there on the perimeter. No gain, second and 10 at the Bulldog 13. Jones remains at running back. They give to Jones up the middle. Spins off of a tack, would be tackler Clark. Clark yeah. hangs on and brings him down. Number three, Isaiah Clark. Uh, did a good job up front that time, McKinley did, on a trap play. As Willard gets up a little gingerly. Uh, but Clark closed quick. What looked like it could have been a, a much bigger gain. Turns into a gain of five. Yeah, Jones is listed at six foot, 195 pounds. Yeah, he's a nice size back as well. Um, haven't seen much of him all year, um, and I don't know what, for what reason they're they're going with him, uh, but they like his his size and his strength. Here's another big play, third down and five at the Bulldog 18. Snap to Wesley. Wesley going to try to take it inside. He gets outside. Look out, Elijah Wesley breaks out to the 30 and chased out of bounds across the 35. Yeah, the, you know, just quarterback counter to the right hand side, and. Uh, Maslin closes too much on the outside. I think Jaden Wise gets caught up a little bit as, as well as the corner out there. And a uh, good game for Wesley. As I mentioned uh, in the first half, I think they got to put the ball in his hands uh, as a running back more often. Uh, he's been the, the lone spark for them so far. First down, McKinley at their own 36. 8.33 to go, third quarter. Tigers on top, 14 to nothing. Jones shifts over to the right now. And he'll give it to Jones straight ahead. Jones with some running room as he crosses the 40 to the 41. A flag comes in. Normally you get a holding call in there. Yeah, I don't know. It could be a face mask as well. I'm not sure. Uh, it's a um, just a quick trap play. Front side trap by the, uh, the guard kicking out. 
Personal foul, face mask, 15 yards, first down. Ouch. So, you know, the, the first time McKinley offense has now crossed midfield with exception to that first long run. Yep. So that's a big one. That'll take it all the way down to the Tiger 44. In Maslin territory, Bulldogs with a first and 10. And they give us to Jones. Jones cuts it outside. Jones still on his feet, showing good power. And Jones carries to the 40, a tough four yards for number 28, Rob Jones. Yeah, he's, uh, you know, we know McKinley's been a little dinged up. I, I said we haven't really seen much of him, but uh, he's showing his strength. Just a counter play off the right-hand side there. First contact made about two yards downfield, and Jones is able to take him another two for a nice gain of four or five. Yep, give him five. Second and five at the Tiger 39. Jones again spins. Jones with good yardage, and he'll take it to the 35. That'll bring up third down and just one. Just off tackle there on the inside. Jones doing a good job getting north and south. See if the Tiger D can tighten up a little bit here. And it's Jones again. Jones has got the first down, and his forward progress will take him to the 32. And the Tiger D didn't get lined up that time, and uh, McKinley's moving, moving pretty quick. It looks like we do have a man down. I think that is Jones, Dave. He took a couple shots there after he got through that first level. It is Jones. It is good to see him get up and walk it off. I'm not sure if he's allowed to come back on the field. Oh, he's got to come off. You got number 16 in the backfield now for the Bulldogs. Manny Powell. That's Powell. The linebacker who yeah. has been a standout all season long. Now he comes in at running back. And I think he's played um, some, some uh, spots at running back this year, so and it's going to be Powell again. Powell puts his head down, crosses the 30. Yeah, just and, running that corner yeah. on the, or counter on the uh, shorthand side, and really nobody out there on on uh, the contain. Looks like they might have found something now. Yeah, a little something there. Run to that short side. Second and six. Powell again to the right side. Powell stacked up, still fighting for yardage. Gets close to the 25. 6.44 and a running clock here in the third quarter. So again, McKinley just running, sticking to that counter play off the right-hand side. They like, you know, they've, they've run that three or four times in this series with some success. Mass a little bit better job there. Jamie, um, third down and three. Big, big play here uh, for Pollitt, the Tiger defense. Pollitt running back at the 25. Wesley going to keep. Wesley in the backfield. Wesley stood up, and he's going to have the first down down close to the 21-yard line with that forward progress. Yeah, you know, uh, we played that well. Mm -hmm. the Tiger defense, uh, Miller stayed at home. Wesley showing his athleticism, stuck his foot in the ground uh, and saw an inside seam. Was originally going to try to take that to the outside on the naked and uh, was able to pick that first down up. Ball right inside, close to the 21, first and 10, McKinley. By far their most impressive drive of the game. 6.02 here in the first or third quarter. Powell straight ahead, breaking tackles. Powell close to the 10. Well, tail of two halves here. I mean, uh, McKinley's handling the, the front seven. Maslin, that's their first timeout. And Nate Moore, the Maslin Tigers, calls for a timeout. We'll be back after this word from Buffalo Wild Wings in Maslin. You didn't know until right now, but you want to get wings at B-Dubs. And you want all 24 sauces and seasonings, like original buffalo or honey barbecue or Asian zing. Eat them here or enjoy them at home. Buffalo Wild Wings. Roar! You didn't know until right now, but you want to get wings at B-Dubs. And you want all 24 sauces and seasonings, like original buffalo or honey barbecue or Asian zing. Eat them here or enjoy them at home. Buffalo Wild Wings. Roar! 
Medicap Pharmacy on Lincoln Way West has been serving our area for over 20 years. They're your local pharmacy that cares about you and your time. I can get them filled from five to 10 minutes. If I go to a chain drug store, I may have to wait half hour to an hour. Enjoy their convenient drive through service along with free delivery in the Maslin area. Hi, I'm Chris Kingsbury, owner and pharmacist at Medicap Pharmacy. Stop in sometime soon and you can experience our fast and friendly service. Thanks to Medicap Pharmacy and Buffalo Wild Wings in Maslin. After the Maslin timeout, first and 10 McKinley at their own 11 yard line. Elijah Wesley makes a great play to escape and turns a negative into a positive as he takes it down near the Tiger 7. Yeah, you know, Johnson closed in from his corner spot and just overclosed, and Wesley put the brakes on, took that little power play, that Q power play, and bounced it out to the right hand side, which should have been a, maybe a loss of one or two, turns into a gain of three or four. Second down and seven at the Tiger eight yard line. They can get a first down inside the one. This is Powell. Powell straight ahead. Manny Powell fighting. And it's a touchdown, McKinley. Yeah, they. Uh, McKinley won the line of scrimmage on that series. There's no doubt about it. Uh, they probably had a good talking to it at halftime. And yep, the Bulldogs are alive and well. And that puts uh, a whole new perspective on this football game, which, you know, since that first play was pretty much dominated by the orange and black. And McKinley comes out. They get a, a three and out. Uh, Masson really conservative, runs the ball three times. Uh, doesn't get a first down. Good punt. They pin him back. That's an 87-yard drive for McKinley. DeMonte Marshall on to attempt the extra point. Kick is up. Kick is good. 5.43 to go in the third quarter. It's now Maslin 14, McKinley 7. Back after this word from Friends and Family Credit Union. At Friends and Family Credit Union, you, the members, are the owners. Our friendly staff serves over 11,000 members, assisting with their financial needs and bettering their lifestyles. Hi, I'm Nick Langenfeld, President and CEO of Friends and Family Credit Union. Friends and Family Credit Union provides loans, savings, checking, and other financial services to anyone who lives, works, worships, or attends school in Stark County. Are you looking for something different? Stop in today to become a friend of the family. We've told you about the Mirrors Must See Guarantee, but don't take our word for it. Uh, they made it clear from the first time I walked in that uh, their job didn't end uh, once they handed me the keys. Uh, I serviced my vehicles here. Not only the one I bought here, but my mother's, and the way they treated me with respect, follow-up calls. But the folks here at Mears Nissan treat you that way from start to finish. See us at 4825 West Tuscarora Street in Canton or online at MearsNissan.com. Thanks to Mears Nissan and Friends and Family Credit Union. Back at Maslin's Paul Brown Tiger Stadium. 5.43 to go here in the third quarter. It's gotten interesting. McKinley on the board, trailing Maslin now 14-7. to Yeah, Manny Powell showing his 6'2", 225-pound frame there. He got hit at about the five-yard line, carried about two or three Tigers with him. Uh, great run by that young man. Marshall kicks it on the ground, picked up by Wise. Now he'll fall on it as he had it and then dropped it, picked it back up, lays out, down on it at the 32. A little squib kick there. and Jaden did a good job of snagging it with one hand, and then when he went, went to bring it in, he lost it again. But um, Smart play, dive on it. Still right. good field position here. Uh, you know, anytime you start past the 30-yard line, that's a good, good starting point for the offense. Well, let's see if the Tiger offensive line can reestablish some control there. It was three and out the first time on offense for Maslin here in the third quarter. They get the ball back now, 5.42 to go in the third. And the handoff is to Hartson. Hartson, good yardage, crosses the 35, close to the 40, and a pickup of near eight yards on first down. Yeah, the only difference there is they brought uh, Johnson in motion, faked the jet sweep on the right-hand side. That's, that, that freezes the linebackers and uh, just running the same off-tackle power play. Good job by Will Trell there, getting a gain of eight. At the 40, now second down and two for the Tigers, two receivers to the near side. And in motion, and the give to Hartson again. Hartson with running room, picks his hole, and carries to the 44. That's a Tiger first down, a pickup of four yards. And a big stick there by Brian Pinckney, number 10, as we mentioned him for the, the Bulldogs. He's a 
close to about a 200 pound safety. But again, you know, now we're starting to st reestablish maybe the line of scrimmage. Uh, good push there on the left hand side. Again, Will Troll Hartson of the Tigers, 5'10, 200 pounds, just a sophomore. And he's making a name for himself in this one. And he carries across the 45, again to the 49. Tiger offensive line picking up five yards. And now a whistle comes in. Oh, Hartson lost his helmet, so he'll have to check out. Right. Liebler's checking in for him. Five, Doing a heck of a job. They're going to give him almost five on that. It'll be second down and a long five, just shy of the Tiger 49. Liebler back in it, running back now. And they give to Liebler. Liebler steps inside, breaks a tackle. Nick Liebler inside the McKinley 35. Yeah, you know, he, he, Hartson's been probably seeing the majority of the snaps, but when, when Liebler comes in there, he gives him a nice little change of pace, a nice little burst, hasn't played running back all year. You'd, mm -hmm. never, you'd never guess. Right. 4.17 clock running here in the third quarter. Tigers lead it 14-7. to seven. Ball at the McKinley 33. And it's Liebler again. Liebler hit hard, spun around at the 30. Yeah, Powell doing a better job there, scraping off. And then uh, Pinckney cleaning up what looked like a big hole that opened up, closed pretty quickly from number 16 and 10, the two uh, defensive stars for the Bulldogs. Tigers doing it exclusively on the ground this drive. Second and seven at the Bulldog 30. Low snap, Liebler again. Liebler steps inside again, and he carries down to the 22 before being tackled by Stovall of the Bulldogs. Now this game reminds me of a couple years ago when we gave <laughs> Jameer Thomas, except it was only one back. We've got a few <laughs> back by committee. I think we gave him the ball over 40 times and just run a lot of off tackle and uh, controlling the line of scrimmage. First and 10, Maslin at the Bulldog 22. Again, Liebler following the blocking. Liebler again carries down near the 16. Great job on the right-hand side. That's Terrence Rankle uh, at the right tackle position. Um, and Dylan Gerritsen at the right guard. And then you got Big John Cooth coming around there. Mm -hmm. And Big John Cooth goes, uh, he's about two, 300 pounds coming around that right end. Second down, and we'll call it four. Liebler again. Look at the gap to the 10. Liebler down to the five. It'll be first and goal, Maslin. Yeah, you know, not really sure. We got a penalty, and I think that's going to be on McKinley. Tiger slow to get up. That's uh, Billman, I right. believe. Yep. Dead ball, personal foul, number 33, white half the distance to the goal. Uh, Kuth goes 6'1", 3 15, 68, Rankle 6'5", 285. He's going to Pitt. And Gerritsen, uh, he's 5'10", 255. So I think they're taking advantage of, of the, the size on the right-hand side there. And so the Tigers have a first and goal, Jamie, at the Bulldog three. Yeah, I mean, I think the philosophy is going to be until McKinley shows they can stop it. Um, They'll keep doing a lot of the same stuff. Liebler in the backfield. They'll hand it to him. Liebler with a push. Liebler to the one and then shoved back. A good push for about two, two yards. Mm -hmm. 219, 218, clock running, third quarter. Tigers up 14 7. Sapaia with a tackle for McKinley. That's a name we keep hearing over the years mm -hmm. in, in, uh, in Canton on the defensive side of the football. All right, Liebler lines up to the left side of Catrone now. Second and goal at the two. They'll give it to him, Liebler straight ahead. Touchdown, Maslin. This time going off the left-hand side. And the Tigers get that score right back. Good Left response. Tackles. Todrick Lee, he's a junior, 6'1", 255. So a little change up there on the left-hand side. and I mean, what a drive. I mean, yeah. I don't know, 
15 runs in a row. I, I, I don't know. We don't have the stat sheet in front of us. I think they ran the same play every time. A little bit of what we saw with McKinley. They, they pretty much you know, stuck to that counter uh, on the same side. And if you see some success, you're going to keep with it. This is Alex Bauer on to attempt the extra point. Great response by the Tigers there. Kick up, kick good. Timeout on the field, Maslin 21, McKinley 7. Now this word from the Downtown Maslin Association. There's so much special about Maslin. You can't walk down the street without smiling and saying hello to someone who knows you, who knows your family. In today's society, we're getting fewer and fewer opportunities for families to enjoy each other in an outside activity that is free. We have that. It's a strong community. People give back. Maslin continues to give back with the residents and businesses to those in need, and, and it's a great thing to be a part of. Back here at Paul Brown Tiger Stadium, thank you to the Downtown Maslin Association. 1.53 to go, third quarter. Tigers respond to the Bulldog touchdown with one of their own. It's Maslin 21, McKinley 7. Yeah, I want to I mention, I, I mentioned uh, both sides of the line, and I forgot the guy in the middle that makes it all work, Jaden Woods. Um, you just got to give tribute to, to our offensive line, as well as guys like Dylan Geyer and, and Caden Willard and Michael Billman for getting the job done. Um, just pretty much running the power off tackle play, I don't know, 12, 13, 14 times. And, Great response off of that uh, McKinley touchdown. Magnus Haynes takes it into the end zone for a touchback. Yeah, number 42 ate his Wheaties today, that's for sure. And that's number four, our starting safety. Brawley, we hate to see that. Hopefully that's nothing too serious. It's a cramp it looks like, yeah. so that's good. Brawley down at the 45-yard line. We're going to step aside. This word now from Tower Industries. Back here at Paul Brown Tiger Stadium, thanks to Tower Industries, Austin Brawley. Again, looks like he'll come out. He'll have to come out for at least one play. Yeah, it looked like a cramp. Um, anytime you got that leg straight up in the air and you're pushing on that toe. But number four is a, a key piece to the defense. But number seven, Tanner Pierce checks in. Um, and I know they like uh, his, his ability as well. So Tigers really don't lose much. They've got uh, great depth. All right, 1.53 to go in the third quarter. Tigers lead it 21-7. McKinley with a first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Rob Jones back in at running back now as McKinley will set up with two receivers to the far side for quarterback Elijah Wesley. We'll see if they're going to see uh, that safety rolling low and they're going to, no, they're going to stick to the run game. Wesley going to try to get outside. He's in trouble. He'll be surrounded. And it's Andrew Wilson Lamp who finally is able to corral him back at the 18. Just too much speed on this Tiger defense to try to reverse your field. Uh, good job by Big 78, CJ Harris uh, from the backside on the interior line. And then uh, Lamp does a nice job staying at home at corner. A loss of two back to the 18. Second and 12. New linebacker in for the Tigers as well. That's 44, Nathan Dupuy. He's, I think, coming and spelling uh, Liebler. Right. <laughs> Who's playing a lot of offense right. today. This is Jones on the Big carry. Seam. Jones tackle. crosses the 20 to the 21, a gain of three. Martavian Johnson, when you have a corner that can come up and, and tackle like that, that was a big seam. I'm not really sure. You know, we're not getting that uh, that scrape over the top on that counter play like we're used to. And uh, they're having success on the right hand side with that counter play. But third and nine, it's going to be tough to run that same play again here. So we'll have to see what McKinley di dials up here on third and nine. The clock continues to run. 35 seconds left here in the third quarter. Tigers up 21 7. McKinley with a big third down and nine. Jones, the running back, to the left of Wesley. They'll put a man in motion and Wesley to throw. Ball tipped by Woolard. 
and nearly intercepted. It'll be fourth down, and Caden Woolard again with a big play. Yeah, I mean, he's six foot four frame, gets his paw up there, trying to run that little jailbreak break screen uh, like the Tigers were earlier in the ball game. Uh, defense response to, you know, a, a, a drive that they were dominated on mm -hmm. last series. I'm sure that the, the defense coaches, we haven't seen that really all year, to be mm -hmm. honest with you. And uh, good response by them. In putting formation, Ala Saad for McKinley. Back inside is 10. Martavian Johnson for the Tigers near the Maslin 45. 17 seconds left here in the third quarter. Saad kicks it away from Johnson again to near the Tigers' sideline. It sails out of bounds right near midfield. Let's see. Ball at the 48-yard line. Maslin gets the ball back with 12 seconds left here in the third quarter. Great field position there. Looks like they're going to get the ball at the right, right, right before the midfield strike, about 48-yard line. And we're, we've been in this position before. We're up four, we're up 14 points. Mm -hmm. Great field position. Tiger defense, three and out. This is the time that, that Maslin can really um, make a difference with any kind of score, because any kind of score puts you up three scores. Hartson back in it, running back for the Tigers on first and 10, and they'll give it to Hartson. Straight ahead, Hartson into McKinley territory, and Hartson to the 47. That is a pickup of six yards on first down. And that is gonna wind down the end of the third quarter. We've played three here at Maslin, our score. The Tigers 21, the Bulldogs seven. Now this word from Erie Street Pub and Buell and Oliveri Insurance. Big game's on. You could watch a game like this. Or you could watch a game like this surrounded by fans just like you. At the Erie Street Pub, the game never ends. Open seven days a week. Erie Street Pub has pub style food at the right price with daily lunch specials. Wednesday is ladies night. And enjoy our large outside bar and patio. What's keeping you from the Erie Street Pub? Just up the road from Genshaft Fields. What are you waiting for? Come join us at Erie Street Pub. One minute, you're out there living life to the fullest. The next thing you know, you've got sweeping changes to make and your family's future to think about. Talk to a Grange independent agent about how to save by putting all of your insurance with Grange, protecting your possessions and the ones you love. When things zig instead of zag. Buell and Oliveri Insurance is your Grange Independent Agent in Maslin. For auto, home, life, or business insurance, call or visit our website today. Thanks to Buell and Oliveri Insurance and the Erie Street Pub, we get set to start the fourth quarter. It's Maslin 21, McKinley 7. The Tigers come out with a second down and five. You mentioned, uh, you know, continue to do what we're doing until they stop it, and McKinley hasn't been able to show that they can do that. And now a flag comes in. Going to go against the Tigers here. Five-yard penalty against Maslin will move the ball back. I'm sure that, you know, some of the Tiger fans and people watching are saying, what the heck, you got, you got Jaden Ballard, you got Andrew Wilson, Lamp, they're two Division I receivers, Martavian Johnson, why aren't we throwing it around? Well, I mean, you know, we're getting five yards of crack every time we run the ball, so you really can't blame the offensive coaches. At the 48, Hartson straight ahead. Hartson back into McKinley territory to the 46. That is a gain of six yards. And I don't, it's just, you know, McKinley really hasn't changed. Uh, they'll bring an extra guy into the box here and there, but they really haven't changed what they're doing. And I think, you know, Mass is just comfortable that they feel like we can get four or five every time. At the 46-yard line. Third down and four. And Catrone to throw. Ball in the air down the field. Andrew Wilson Lamp has it. Oh. Catrone puts that one on the money down inside the McKinley 15. Yeah, that's just, you know, they run that tag screen two or three times and then uh, they fake the tag screen and send Lamp down the left sideline and good throw by Catrone. And that was really a great catch. Yeah, great catch uh, by Andrew as I, you know, was mentioning as we're continuing to run the football, we hadn't thrown it. 
Uh, we do have the ability to do it, but again, I just, if you don't have to, you know, why do it? Why put yourself at risk? At the 14, first and 10, this is Hartson. Look wow. at that gap. Hartson, I mean, just touchdown. Dominating this game up front. Uh, 65, John Coot again around. I, I, I just can't, I, I'm really, what surprises me, Dave, is, is McKinley's not made one adjustment. Um, you know, I don't know, get in a, in, in, a, in a bare front, get in some type of different look. I know you're putting your guys on an island when you do that, but it, it, it's like stealing right now. I mean, you're just handing the ball off and running one with the same play over and over again. And, uh, they're not gonna. They're not gonna quit doing it until they stop it. 11 minutes and 12 seconds left in the game. The Tigers now lead it 27 to 7. Bauer on for the extra point. Kick up. Kick is good again. Four for four on the day for Alex Bauer. Timeout. Maslin leads it 28 to 7. Now this for your pizza shop. Serving the Maslin area since the 1960s, your pizza shop, located on Maslin's west side, has great tasting pizza and a whole lot more. Their large menu includes pizza, wings, pressure fried chicken, oven baked subs, and much more. Enjoy their hearty buffet Thursday through Sunday. Don't forget their convenient drive through window and delivery service. Be sure to visit any one of their numerous locations in Northeast Ohio. When you're ready for great pizza and more, stop into your pizza shop, located on Maslin's west side. 11-12 left in the game. At Paul Brown Tiger Stadium, the Tigers on top 28-7 to over the Bulldogs. Tigers scoring a short time ago on a Wittrell Hartson touchdown run. Wow. You know, I, I, know, I, I know I thought we were a better football team up front. I, I didn't know that we would dominate it like this. And again, I'm just surprised that the McKinley coaching staff has not really, they really have not adjusted. They have to get more guys in the box, and they just have not done that. Haynes kicks it away. And on the reception, Lytle on the return at the five. Lytle to the 20, and Lytle pushed out at the 25-yard line. Tigers lead at 28 to 7, and McKinley will get the ball back here on offense. Yeah, look for the Bulldogs to open it up a little bit more here, Dave. Mm -hmm. it, they really don't have a choice. I mean, they can't they can't have a 13 play drive like they did uh, on their last scoring drive that eats up seven eight minutes. It, they just don't have the time to do that. So, you know, look for them to spread it out, try to throw the ball around a little bit more here, and uh, it'll be interesting to see if if they can protect. Uh, Wesley with uh, with Woolard and Miller coming off, uh, you know, those defensive end spots. Manny Powell back in at running back for the Bulldogs. He is set up left of Wesley. First and ten, Wesley going to carry. Wesley trying to get outside. Jaden Wise has him and brings him down back inside the 25. Yeah, we mentioned him. He's had such an outstanding year. Does a great job staying outside in from that outside linebacker position. Mm. That's going to end up a loss of three, second and 13 from the McKinley 24. You know, the, Powell remains in at running back, clock running, 10.40 to go in the game. From the Bulldog 24. Wesley to throw. Here comes Xavier Andrews, ball in the air. Oh. In and out of the hands of Austin Brawley, a jump ball at the Tiger 45, and it falls incomplete. Austin Brawley is playing um, the, the sort of what we call like the nub safety position on the short side. He reads pass. They don't release anybody on the right-hand side. He sticks his foot in the ground. That was a speed turn, and, and that's the kind of ground and, and that these, this defense covers. He comes all the way from the low position, almost makes that interception. Uh, great coverage there also by Isaiah Clark. So McKinley now facing a third down and 13 from their 24. Tigers on top, 28 to seven. Clock stops with 10.22 left in the game. Powell remains at running back. And a timeout taken by McKinley. We're in the fourth quarter. Now let's step aside. This word from the Maslin Boys and Girls Club. 
The Boys and Girls Club of Maslin has been at the forefront of youth development, instilling a sense of competence, usefulness, belonging, and influence. The greatest contributions to the lives of our youth, our communities, our nation, and the world are the life lessons taught every moment of every hour of every club day. The youth of today become the leaders of tomorrow. Great futures start here. Thanks to the Masson Boys and Girls Club back at Paul Brown Tiger Stadium. Dave Sheets and Jamie Palma with you on WHS-TV. Our student crew doing a great job on the cameras today. Thanks to all of our sponsors. Tigers have a bye next week. The playoffs start, Jamie, week number seven. Maslin, the number two seed in our region. Yeah, and interestingly enough, um, uh, this is the first year of coaches voting, and you know, you'd think Maslin being back-to-back -back state championship games and the schedule they played be a one seed, but whatever. Forget about that. You got to play the game. They'll have a bye next week. We'll let guys get rested up and get ready for uh, the postseason. Third and thirteen. Wesley, quick toss, ball in the air, caught, and then tackled right away. And I think that time that was, uh, I don't know if that was Wise or Woolard. It was Garrett who made the catch, yeah, and I, then I, Wise the tackle, I think. Yeah. No, I think oh. it was uh, Clark that okay. came out and made the tackle. I just, I couldn't see. We, we brought a little pressure off uh, the right-hand side. I think it was Jaden Wise got his hand up there, knocked that ball uh, up in the air. Johnson drops back for Maslin inside his 40. Al-Assad to punt again for McKinley at his 15. We're down to 9.42, clock running here in the fourth. Good snap, kick high, but not deep. Johnson going to run up on it, has some momentum, and cut down at the 49-yard line. It reminds me of a, of a guy we had about 20 years ago named Billy Relford. Um, uh, yeah. And I think we all right. remember who he was, but he was such a good punt returner. He was so good, you know. He would he 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 look downfield um, and, and bring his eyes up, look back downfield, see how much space he has, and then come up and catch that thing on the run. Uh, just a great weapon to have there uh, with uh, Johnson returning punts. Nine twenty-nine left. Maslin twenty-eight. McKinley seven. Hartson remains again, in a running you know, back. And McKinley stays in a in a too high safety look. And they'll give it to Johnson. They'll fake the double reverse. Johnson to the 45. And Johnson pushed out near the 42. Yeah, just, uh, just I'm really surprised. What, what, what Maslin's got to make sure you do, they do right now is don't, don't get involved in any of the extracurriculars. Right. You start seeing some John down there. Just keep your cool. Keep playing the game. Play from whistle to whistle. Uh, you know, you get thrown out of a game, I think you're out the next game. I don't know if that carries over to the, uh, the playoffs um, because we do have a bye, but just want to be smart here. Second and one, Catrone to throw. Looking downfield for Ballard. Down the field, and it's incomplete. Ballard was covered by two defenders. Maslin fans down in front of us wanted interference. They didn't get it. Well, you know, listen, that's the second shot we've taken at Jaden. And... Uh, Almost made a great play there. I thought he was interfered. But he's double covered. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I know we're sitting here saying, well, what the heck, we got Jaden Ballard, he's going to Ohio State. Him doing that this entire game, I don't think people really understand what that does. It, it does not allow them to bring that safety down in the box, as we've been mm -hmm. mentioning. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've seen teams doing that. And that in itself is, is a great job by Jaden um, because he's that kind of threat. This is Hartson on third down. He's got the Tiger first down. He picks up about four and takes it down to the 37. Clock at 9.13 left in the game, 28-7 Maslin. Down to the McKinley, 37. First and 10, Tigers. Yeah, they, what they've done is they've just sort of played a bracket covers to number nine the entire game. And the give to Hartson again. And that's, and that's going to be the result. <laughs> we'll take it every time. Hartson, touchdown, Tigers. What a game for 25. And again, credit that offensive line up front, Jamie. Yeah. 
Left side offense line. Wow. 34 to 7 and with 850 left. Hartson's only a sophomore. And you know, he's he's played sparingly this year. But you know, with the injury to Raekwon and the injury to uh, Beasley. He's having a little coming out party here, and, and the more comfortable you get and the more reps you get as a young back, you know, you're going to start seeing the improvement. Bauer on to attempt the extra point. Kick up, and good. Our score, the Tigers 35, the Bulldogs 7. 8.50 left in the game. Now this word from Mears Nissan. We've told you about the Mirrors Must See Guarantee, but don't take our word for it. Well, before we came in to test drive the vehicle, my husband and I had done some research on the website and we really enjoyed how easy Mirrors Nissan's website was to use. We weren't really sure at that time because we didn't need to buy a car. Very low key, low pressure, let us you know, take the weekend to think about it. So it was really easy peasy for us. See us at 4825 West Tuscarora Street in Canton or online at MearsNissan.com. Thanks to Mears Nissan, 8.50 left in the game. The Tigers led 14 to nothing at the half. They now lead it 35 to seven. Here as we approach the midway point of the fourth quarter. Yeah, I think, you, you know, you get into a, a situation like this, I mean, barring any miracle, you know, the Tigers are gonna win the game. We just gotta be smart. Keep playing hard, play whistle to whistle, nothing outside of the whistle and uh, come off this thing with a, with a nice nice victory here this Saturday. Haynes with another kick. It'll be Jonah Lytle at the eight. Flag comes in. Lytle tripped up near the 20 yard line. I think you're gonna have a clip or a hold of some sort on McKinley. Yep. That's gonna be the call. It's gonna go against the Bulldogs, so they're gonna be backed up again. Yeah, not making anything Holding much easier for 33 oh. white, white, 10 yards. No, it's yeah, it's it's on on yep. McKinley. Um, just not making it much easier for Wesley, you know, and uh, I think. Yeah, Jamie, you 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 said it. I I think the idea is, boy, if you're Maslin now, you want to. You want to play smart. You want to. You don't want to get into a, a jawing competition no, with anybody. No. You don't want to get anybody hurt. Yeah, I mean it's. It, it, they've been proving it on the field, um, and I know that there's always a little maybe bad blood between the two. But you know you just got to be smart. McKinley's got a, a playoff ahead of them, and you know, hopefully they're you know they're out there just playing from whistle to whistle, and we're smart, like as you said. Ball at the 13 now. First and ten. Wesley to throw, throws over the middle, mm. and in and out of the hands of Andrew Wilson Lamp, who had another one. He had a chance like that in the first yeah. half. <laughs> you can't believe it. I just don't think, you know, Andrew's, he's beside himself. Those are not <laughs> plays he usually misses, but credit, wow. the, credit the pressure there. Um, number eight checks in, that's TJ Williams. Yeah. We've seen him making plays on special teams today. They brought him off the edge along with Miller. And I think, uh, it, clearly Wesley's not comfortable back there. So it's second down and 10 from the 13. Wesley again to throw. Tigers applying pressure, Wesley to run. Jaden Wise chases him and he'll go out of bounds on that far side right near the line of scrimmage. No gain basically. Yeah, now a flag comes in, too, on that far side. I don't know. I mean, Jaden Jay, definitely did not hit him late, so I don't, I don't know what that call is. Uh, just great job by him showing his speed, his pursuit. Stops the clock with 8.33 left. I think we're going to get a defensive holding penalty against the Tigers. Personal foul nope. number 22, Orange. Late hit, 15 now, yards. Yeah, I 100% you know, disagree with that call. His aggressive play. Um, and unfortunately, it looks like Wesley is down on the far side. Is he? Yeah. Yeah, you don't. You, you hate to see that. I don't know. Maybe, you know, maybe it was a little bit late, but I, I felt like it, the, the, the contact was made in the field of play. Eight thirty-three to go. 
Tigers 35, Bulldogs 7. Now those are those are penalties you can live with. Um, you know, we, we, we hope the best for, for Elijah. We know how important he is to McKinley's success in the playoffs. Um, but I, I say those are penalties you can live with because I felt that was an aggressive play within, um, within the field of play, and it might have just carried to, out to the out of bounds and sometimes you can't can't uh, slow yourself down and but uh we're going to step aside jamie let's yeah. get this word in from cosmos grill if you're searching for great tasting food in a fun cozy atmosphere then be sure to visit cosmos grill in downtown maslin enjoy lunch or dinner with family friends and co-workers Cosmos Grill has a large upstairs room, too, perfect for family gatherings, receptions, and class reunions. And then there's the food, your favorite appetizers, soups, salads, entrees, and desserts. Don't forget their wonderful wood fire pizza. It's amazing. Visit Cosmos Grill on 1st Street in downtown Maslin. Medicap Pharmacy on Lincoln Way West has been serving our area for over 20 years. They're your local pharmacy that cares about you and your time. I can get them filled from 5 to 10 minutes. If I go to a chain drug store, I may have to wait half hour to an hour. Enjoy their convenient drive through service along with free delivery in the Maslin area. Hi, I'm Chris Kingsbury, owner and pharmacist at Medicap Pharmacy. Stop in sometime soon and you can experience our fast and friendly service. Again, the injured player, Elijah Wesley of the McKinley Bulldogs. We hope that he is okay. Real quick, want to thank Medicap Pharmacy and Cosmos Grill. Yeah, it's good to see Elijah get up. I think he's walking off on his own power. Not really sure what happened to him there. 8.33 left in the game. Nehemiah Stovall is the backup quarterback. He is a senior listed at 6'1", 175 pounds, normally plays in the defensive secondary. He started last week against Glen Oak, Dave, and mm -hmm. uh, he's, a, he's, a, he's a nice football player. The running back is Jones, and he is dragged down, breaking through linebacker Xavier Andrews. Xavier Andrews, right, co-captain. Yep. Yeah, you know, he saw uh, the back, so he, he, he took the back door route, and he's, he's got the speed to do that uh, 33 we've done that seen him do that uh, all season and good job uh, by Xavier second and 10 clock continues to run will be under eight minutes left after this play Stovall looks to the sideline again has Rob Jones the running back with him in the gun from the 28 and Jones again this time he slips and goes down. Getting in there was Billman. Billman, yeah. And I don't think it. Uh, I don't think Jones would have got much further anyway. No, no, I didn't see much room. So that's going to bring up third down and eleven from the Bulldog twenty-seven. Yeah, I think uh, you know. I think McKinley's going to take the conservative route. They've got a backup quarterback. They haven't had success when Wesley's been in there. Mm -hmm. Let alone you know you bring your backup in and. But he is a capable player. Uh, you know, played pretty nice uh, quarterback position last week against Glen Oak. Third and 11, the give to Jones. Jones Thanks. goes right side. He's got running room, and he's going to get the McKinley first down as he takes it to the Tiger 40-yard line with seven minutes to go in the game. Yeah, it's definitely been uh, McKinley's most successful play. The counter to the short side, uh, tight end side. But if you're Maslin's defense here, obviously you just want to keep everything in front of you. Sure, right? sure. I mean, I just don't, you know, I think that um, not really sure maybe who was out of position there, but that was that was a very big seam um, on that short side. First and 10 McKinley at their own 41. And they give to Jones again. Billman nearly got him. Jones fights for yardage and a pickup of a yard or two, close to the 42, maybe the 43. Yeah, just great job swarming uh, Billman, getting in there first, and then and you see the likes of uh, of Andrews and Wise and Miller. Again, that clock continues to roll, Jamie. We're down to 6-12 with a running clock. What a performance by the Tigers today. Yeah, just uh, 
both sides of the football, all three sides. Can't forget special teams. Mm -hmm. uh, really dominated that side of the, of the game as well. Tigers with, now I haven't seen every Maslin game this year, but it seems to me like their most complete game. Would you agree? Yeah, you know, um, I, I would agree with you. I would agree with you, no, no doubt, especially, you know, in this magnitude of a game. You're, you went, you're up 35-7 against a 4-1 McKinley football team. Uh, yeah, that's showing that you're playing the complete game. 5.50 left in the game, and the Bulldogs take a timeout. That is their second of the half. Yeah, I mentioned, uh, you know, the, it's just funny when you look at the history of this game. It's sort of been a swing in decades. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, the 70s, Masson was 8-2 and two during the 1970s, sort of dominated the 70s. And then things started to shift in the 80s, and McKinley won... Um, six out of the, out of the uh, 11 games. They played, played 11 times. They didn't play in the, in the playoffs. The 90s, McKinley dominated, really, most of the 90s with some of them great state championship teams mm -hmm. that we saw when an eight out of, uh, going 8-3. and three. Um, And then since the 2000s, Maslin sort of had McKinley's number, 9-4 and four in the 2000s with three playoff wins. And since uh, 2010s, 8-3. and three. And they've won last 8 of 9 and what looks to be the last 9 of 10. So um, it's just, as I mentioned, if you look over the decades, it's been swinging in the favors of, uh, of Maslin here over the last uh, couple decades. And Nate a great, Moore, great way yeah. to start the next one off. Sorry to, didn't yeah. to cut you off, Dave. Nate Moore is on the verge of going 5-1 and one in his six year yeah, here that, at Maslin. Yeah, that, that helps your, uh, your status here <laughs> as the Maslin head football coach, no doubt. Second and nine for the Bulldogs at their own 42. Again, 5.50 to go. Jones the carry. Jones has running room and gets a nice carry near midfield, and Austin Brawley came up to make the stop. Another counter play there. McKinley's having success with it. Um, Masson tried to bring Wise off the edge there, maybe make the play. He came up field a little too much, got to flatten himself down. Uh, third and short. Yep, third and one right at midfield. 35 to 7. Tigers with 520 left. Time is running out for the Bulldogs. Yeah, they're not in any hurry. And nope. I, I just think that. Uh... High snap. Jones gets it. Again, first man. down. Good tackle. Yep. Tigers stand him up, but Jones is going to get the first down to the Maslin 48 yard line. Austin Brawley, good job. Yeah, Jones is a, he's only a sophomore, so we've seen a, a couple young so sophomore running backs. I mean, I think we'll, we'll hear Rob Jones' name. Um, and I apologize. I, I'm saying he's a sophomore. He's a senior. I do apologize for that. But, uh, he's a nice back. I mean, mm -hmm. he runs it up in there. Ball at the Maslin 48. Jamie, after this play, I want to talk a little bit about, you know, you coached on the Maslin staff for 13 years. How will the Tigers approach the bye week? We'll talk about that in just a minute. From the 48, first and 10, Bulldogs. And to give to Jones again, and no gain, and he is stacked up and pushed back. Yeah, so Andrews and, and uh, Willard again there. You, yeah. you get a six-game regular season, and then everybody makes the playoffs this sure. year, and you get a bye week. So the Tigers will not be on the field till Friday, October 16th after today. How do you handle that as a staff? Well, I think first and foremost, if you look at the Tigers' schedule, they're going to rest up. They're going to take advantage of that rest. Um, you know, guys are going to be dinged after this one. It's a physical football game. Um, but what you don't want to do is you don't want to you, you want to keep that uh, keep your, your stay sharp. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and have good a good week of practice still. Um, scout your opponent it gives you an opportunity. To, you really you know who you're playing. Uh, you know you're going to play the winner of, of the game uh, prior to you. So, again, I've never had to experience that. Yeah. So, as a coach, I would say, you know, you take advantage of the rest time. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to get in the weight room uh, hard with the kids, uh, keep their bodies in shape, get their bodies, uh, you know, right, and then uh, really start to take a look at, at your upcoming opponent. Five-yard penalty against McKinley. 3.48 to go. Maslin 35, McKinley 7. Tigers will play the winner of Columbus Independence and Columbus Walnut Ridge up here. We played right. Walnut Ridge a couple years we ago, did, right? and they had a really nice quarterback. Uh, ah. This is Jones on the carry, and Jones pushed out of bounds yeah, at the job. McKinley 49, stops the clock with 3.40 to go. Yeah, we played Oh, wait, Walnut there was the clock still running. Yeah, he said uh, 
forward oh, stayed progress. In. Okay, stayed in bounds. Um, we played well on our ridge a couple years ago. They had a really nice quarterback, you know, down the Columbus area. So we know we're going to see a Columbus area school. You probably don't know a lot about them. Mm -hmm. um, but that's a big advantage that you, you know, you can sit there and start to prepare for, for that team ahead of time. Clock running down to 310. Third down and 14. And the give to Jones again. And Jones will be knocked down after a gain of a yard maybe to the 49. Again, good job by the Tigers front. And another McKinley punt coming up. Yep. Clock running. Yeah, you know, I think, Dave, I think the key to that, now, now that I've had just some time to, to chew on it a little bit with that question, because you just, you've got to stay sharp in practice that week. Uh, you know, you don't, you don't have an upcoming game. So obviously this week's pretty easy to, to, to have, hopefully, a, a good practice, because you know you're going to see McKinley. You've got no opponent at the end of the week. You've really got to take advantage of practice time, uh, work on some timing, and... Uh, Sod with a high, short kick. There's a penalty flag. I think you're going to get a legal block on number four for McKinley. You're not allowed to cut block in Ohio high school football. It sort of went down at the thighs of Austin Brawley as he came in to pressure the punter. Ball is marked at the Tiger 20. Stops the clock with 2.14 to go in the game. A dominating performance uh, running the ball, almost 300 yards rushing for Maslin, 50 yards passing, only 16 for McKinley, and 168 yards rushing. Hard and to believe. And McKinley's had more plays than Maslin. McKinley has 52 plays uh, to Maslin's 50. Time of possession also in McKinley's favor, 22 minutes to 19. First down's pretty even, but uh, I think it's I think it's just you know you, you got two drives that had a little bit of success for for McKinley. Besides that though, you know McKinley or uh, Maslin's been able to just to be able to hit so many of those big run plays. Well, if, Jamie, I can tell you some of the Maslin assistant the coaches are really upset. They first down. picked up the flag apparently. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's it was a borderline block. He sort of went below the waist, but um, it wasn't down at the ankles like you see a lot of cut blocks. And this is nice to see uh, get a few new get few guys that haven't been on the field get a chance to play in this game. There you go. Catrone lines up the offense at the 20. And a carry for the Tiger running back. Um, it's Eric Thurman. Yep, Eric Thurman, 13. Senior wide receiver, who I know they rep this week at running back, so they're trying to get him, uh, get him to feel a little comfortable out there. Thurman listed at 5'8", 170 pounds, and a senior. And he's a senior, and he's got a lot of uh, potential, and he's got some great speed, and he just they just they ha they didn't need to throw the football today. We would have saw wow. a little bit more of Eric Thurman if that was the case, but just hasn't been the case. Second and ten, no gain. Thurman again right into the middle of that line and not much there. Clock running, we're down to a minute 28. Maslin 35, McKinley 7. And number 19, Dylan Geyer, you know, that's another key right now. You just don't want to, you don't want to see anybody get injured. You know, these, these la this last seconds of this game are really insignificant. Um, yeah. They still do have a few of their starters out there, surprisingly. And you just don't want to see, uh, you know, anyone get hurt. You know, Raekwon last week. And, and really, it was the game. Still, was a, a close game. It's twenty-one fourteen in that mm -hmm. game. So you, you're not going to you're not going to exchange people. But you know, he broke his foot on that on that last series, and it's just uh, it's just tough to see that at the end of the game. So fantastic Coach. job by the Tiger offensive line today. Yeah. And again, Nate Moore will call a timeout. Stops the clock with forty-nine seconds left. And the Maslin faithful here. Not in the biggest of numbers, of course, <laughs> but uh, certainly have been uh, raucous and very supportive of the of the orange and black today. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, we've got uh, we've got the best fans in in all of high school football. I, I truly believe that uh, they follow our Tigers like like none other. I know we've got a lot of people watching our broadcast, so uh, it's going to be an exciting 
downtown. It always is. I know we're <laughs> dealing with the, you know, the negativity of the pandemic, but um, our, our our downtown businesses thrive off of of Maslin football and obviously success. And I think you'll see a, a pretty crowded downtown. Just everybody continue to follow the pro protocols and procedures that, that are in place to keep it safe. And the victory bell is being rung already. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's good to have it five years in a row. That's not an easy thing to do. Um, 49 seconds to go. It's third and 10 for the Tigers at their 20. Thurman again. And broke one tackle, but uh, has taken him down back at the 18-yard line. Good play by Jonah Lytle, who came up to slow him down initially. Yeah, it's always a breath of fresh air when you walk into Washington High School, and the first thing you see is that victory bell. And, That'll stay there for another 365 days. It's fourth down, and the clock down to 21 seconds and about, counting. About two-second difference. I don't know. We'll see what Maslin, I think what they could probably do is take a timeout, run a play, yep. and uh, that'll be the ball game. Yep. Uh, play clock again, two seconds less than the game clock. And now Nate Moore will call a timeout. Oh, let the clock run out. All right. This game is in the books. <laughs> Maslin, 35, McKinley, 7. And the Tigers run across the field to surround that victory bell. Just a, <laughs> just a, such a dominating performance. I, one of the more dominating performances I've seen in a long time. Um, you know, quite some time. And, and I don't want to say surprised because I have confidence in our in our Tigers ability but mm -hmm. you know I mean McKinley was four and one you know their lone loss coming in a really tough game to Perry right um, but but really taking care of business against the rest of the Federal League and uh, you know I, I thought for sure this was going to be a pretty dang good ball game and you know, it, it could have been worse I mean I, I just think about even some of the things that maybe we even left out there on the field and Really, we, we played conservative because we were able to play conservative and just warm out. It's awesome feeling. Awesome it really feeling. Is. So the Tigers will go to five and one, and McKinley will drop to four and two. And uh, both teams will look forward to the playoffs, which start next week. Except for Masson, we'll have a bye. <laughs> there's right. no divi there's no Division One uh, football bye, so McKinley will be playing next week. Um, and and I, I can't remember. I think they're they home. Might, they're home so against Bria Mid Park. Uh, I Bria think. Mid Park. Yeah. yeah so pretty sure about that. They'll have to regroup pretty quickly because I think Division One uh, playoff games are played on Friday nights. Right. They are. So they all have a short week. As uh, Mr. Goff brings our final statistics. Yeah, let's take a look at some yeah. of those, huh? Obviously, the final score, 35 to seven. I'm, I was I was reading some of these off, but uh, 333 offensive yards for the Tigers. 286 of those coming uh, on the ground, 47 on through the air, and uh, 184 total yards for McKinley. 168 on the ground and 16 yards passing mm. uh, quite a surprise there because uh, if you actually look at Wesley's stats um, they've had a lot of success in the air the only turnover of the game was a pretty important one if you remember Dave I mean it was down here on the goal line after Wesley sprung a, a long run and you got to give credit to uh, Andrew Wilson Lamp who was able to run him down showing his speed because that's a touchdown saving tackle and then they they, they cough it up McKinley does and um, so the mm -hmm. only turnover is one turnover. Wesley was uh, 17 rushes for 83 yards. Rob Jones, 18 rushes for 57. Uh, Wesley was four for nine for 16 yards passing, sacked two times. Uh, Garrett, two receptions for 13 yards. And the leading tackler for uh, the Bulldogs was Brian Pickney with nine and a half tackles. And Powell with six. Uh, for the Tigers, we mentioned Hartson and their rushing attack. Uh, he had 20. He carried the ball 22 times for 188 yards and two touchdowns. 61-yard uh, run was his his long. He averaged eight and a half yards a carry. Nick Liebler, 11 carries, 69 yards, 6.3. And Martavian Johnson, two for 14. And Portis, four for 11 and a touchdown. Johnson, 
two catches, 13 yards, didn't throw it much. Uh, Catron was four for eight, sorry, you know, for 47. Uh, Johnson with two catches, and Lamp and Ballard with, with, both with a catch apiece. Magnus Haynes, three punts, 42 yards. Uh, wow. Average, so great job by him. Brawley led the uh, the team in tackles, eight and a half, and Clark uh, right behind him with six and a half tackles. And we saw Caden Woolard with a couple sacks and a, and a tackle for loss. He had a heck of a game as well. All right, we are continuing to enjoy the video of another outstanding Tiger win here today. Maslin winning 35 to seven and improving to five and one in this abbreviated season. Any final thoughts before we say goodnight? Well, it's playoff time, and, uh, you know, we, we get a week off, and it, you mentioned it. I think it's, mm -hmm. it's, that's a good thing for us, and, you know, we get a chance. Sometimes the, the toughest week is the week right after this ball game. Right. And we don't have to play next week, so I think it gives us a time to regroup. Like I said, uh, uh, take some time off to really maybe heal up in some areas and, um, you know, hopefully another nice long run like we're used to seeing. Uh, over the last uh, few years and and uh, one game at a time. So we do not know whether WHS TV will be doing the first playoff right. game. We will, of course, uh, uh, make sure you stay tuned to the uh, school's uh, social media and uh, website and so on and so forth. We will let you know as soon as we know whether we will be able to continue to do these games in the postseason. So. Another, sh another shout out, uh, I, I, we, I, we forgot, we did win the blood battle again, we forgot to mention that. I want to give a shout out to Mr. Sifferlin and our exercise science program. They yes. did such an awesome job in the situation we were in uh, this year uh, with that blood battle that we didn't even know if we were going to be able to do. Good job, kudos to him and the kids in his program that helped put that on. And we know uh, what that's doing is just helping save lives. So I did want to mention that. So as we wrap up today's coverage of Maslin Tiger football, we want to take time to thank the members of our WHS TV crew. Today's crew includes on cameras Amanda Allen, Rob Rex, Royce Charney, and Zach Hamilton. Today's color commentator was Jamie Palmer. I'm yours truly, Dave Sheets, your play-by-play -play announcer. Also, thanks to our directors, Mr. Farrell, Mr. Dewald, and Mr. Rock. Be sure to watch again in two weeks as our Tigers will host an opening round Division II playoff game on Friday, October 16th. A big thanks to all of our season-long football sponsors. We appreciate you. Once again, our final score here today, it was the Maslin Tigers 35, the McKinley Bulldogs 7. Thanks for watching Maslin Tiger football all season long, and we leave you with this word from MCTV. At MCTV, we listen to your needs. That's why our internet options deliver the speed and reliability you don't just want, but you need. Upgrade your internet service to give your in-home Wi-Fi an extra boost. More data running through your home means you can power more devices, spend less time buffering, and more time connected to what matters most. Upgrade today. Give us a call or contact us online. MCTV. We go the extra smile. Hello, I am Paul J. Salvino, and I am humbled to serve as the superintendent of the Maslin City Schools. On Tuesday, November 3rd, the Maslin City Schools will have a levy renewal on the ballot. This no new taxes renewal will be issue 32. Issue 32 was originally passed in 1996, and the dedicated residents of the Maslin City Schools have been extremely supportive every five years during elections since then. Issue 32 is a five-year renewal that equals no new taxes. Issue 32 will generate $2 million per year for our schools. With the recent loss of school funding due to the COVID-19 pandemic, this renewal will be critical for our organization. On behalf of the Maslin City Schools, I ask you to exercise your civic duty on Election Day, Tuesday, November 3rd, 2020. Thank you, and go Tigers! If I could go back and change it all, I would. I would. I think I'm gonna miss you the most. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Or maybe it's just the little moments. I could go back and change, I could go back and change it all. If I could go back. I would. But I can't.
When we adopt a shelter pet, we discover they're a unique mix of all kinds of things. Come on, Jules, spot on this last one. Ah. There it is. Keep going with it. Leo! <laughs> they're a little bit of a lot of things but they're all pure love. I joined cosmetology because I've always loved coloring hair and different colors and makeup. I joined media because I've always had a passion for all things related to media. I've always had a passion for teaching other people especially topics that I'm interested in. I want to pursue a career as an orthopedic surgeon. And so when I saw that we had this class, I immediately circled it on my schedule and was excited to join. This class has made me better because it made me very responsible. I like the relationships that I've developed in this class. The girls that are in here with me, I've really grown close with all of them. I joined this class because I enjoy helping others and I want to make a difference. Even like just making something and having people go, wow, that's really interesting. It means the world. It was just a really good environment to be in. It was real hands-on and it was just something I really wanted to do. I joined the construction trades to gain experience in the job I want in the future. Everything that this class has taught me will account for my career in the future. Before I came to this class, I was unemployed and Ms. Markley helped me get a job. I'm going to use what I learned in manufacturing in order to better decide my career. It gave me more knowledge on cars and gave me plans to go in the auto industry. Maslin CTE works for me. 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 Works for me. For me. For me. For me. Maslin CTE works for me. For me.